when, when you do comedy in Shanghai, the international audiences, the, the good thing is they get a lot of those more Chinese jokes. So if you do a lot of jokes about China, about the China and the East and the West cultural differences, they all get it. Or do they heckle? Do, do people heckle no, here in China? No, no, no. People no don't heckle. Hey, that's not that's a thing a, here, right? It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Like they might, when you do a crowd work to them, they might talk way too much. Mm. Like giving you information that you don't need at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, TMI, like, too much. Yeah. But it's kind of like, yeah. But, but bombing here, it's more like everybody's quiet. They're very quiet. And the, the, the most, it's like they don't get your joke. That's, They're just staring at you. Like, yeah, and they don't get it. <laughs> That's like the worst. I can imagine. Oh. Like I can see a lot of comedians here, like especially the Western comedians, and they perform in front of a bunch of Chinese audience, and they bomb hard, and they do not. You can see they're panicking on stage. <laughs> <laughs> they're probably like listening to my phone right. Now. <laughs> For sure, they're, they're, they're right outside that door. Yeah, right I know. Yeah. I think guys, come on in. Yeah, once once you get on that radar, then. Yeah. yeah. Well, Just, that's I. I think that's probably something we all have in common: having Western exposure, but also having um, Chinese roots. Mm. And living here is, I think, the complicated relationship we probably have. Yeah. With this being home, right? It's yeah. it's it's a very complicated relationship. There's a lot of nuance to it, I guess. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But anyway, let's uh, let's not get down the dark and windy road <laughs> just yet. Right off yeah. the top. If we go there by accident, then it happens, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, first, uh, cheers, Don. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome. All right. Yeah. Happy Chinese New Year. Happy Chinese New Year. Yes, it's Dragon's Year too. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Are you dragon or something? Or? I am a dragon. Oh shit. Yeah. Really? Okay. Okay. My mom's a dragon. Yeah. Does that mean that? Um, it really any... means shit. Like, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't mean, mean anything. Everyone's like, "Oh, you're a dragon." Like, <laughs> doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You're like, I just don't know what else to say. It's just dragon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm a dragon. It sounds cool. Yeah, it it sounds cooler than the rabbit. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. You're uh, so you're a stand up comedian. We've been, as Howie said to you, mentioned before we started recording, we've been wanting to get a comedian on this show for the longest time. Yeah. Uh, we love stand-up comedy here. You do? Yeah, we love it. Nice. And I've been telling myself for the longest time that I'm going to go see a stand-up comedy show in Shanghai. For some reason, I just haven't, still haven't gotten around to it. Oh, really? Yeah. You, but I need you to couldn't get find one or... <laughs> I just, just, been, just I've been lazy enough. about it. i just been lazy about it. No, we... Yeah. Yeah. I've been, no, I've been to one. I've been when... Like this Kung was Fu? no when Theo Vaughn was here. Oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. That was a while ago. Oh yeah, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was the only one I've been to. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it used to be. Uh, uh, you Shanghai used to have like a lot of international co comedians coming here. Mm -hmm. Then yeah, no, not gone. so much. But what's the local scene like? The local scene. Um, you mean the Chinese comedy? Yeah. Um, that was that's competitive. A lot of clubs. Uh, a lot of very different comedians, very different levels of comedians. Too. Well, it's been popping up like crazy the past year or two. Yeah. Because of the TV show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. Are there a lot of venues around town? A lot. Yeah, so you can do you can do like a bunch of sets a night. Yeah, a lot of people. Like I don't do much Chinese comedy actually. I uh, I, I mostly I only do English comedy. Yeah. yeah I did a few Chinese comedy because I I think uh, it's really the vetting, uh, the script vetting. Um, that threw me off mm. of Chinese comedy. Um, so I was doing English comedy for a while, but then English comedy show got licensed. Then you also have to do script by. What does that mean? You have to give a you have to your submit script? your script to. The so your your bureau. whole your whole routine. You have to submit it. Everything. Every single word you said on you're, you're saying on the stage, you have to submit. Are you submitting it directly to this bureau, or is there like some sort of third so, party that like gathers the club? It for... The club is submitting it. They are the ones who deal with them. Mm. Yeah, I guess I guess that makes sense because that's just like the offline version of having, like, let's say our podcast episodes approved on any of the Chinese podcast apps, right? They have to be approved. I mean, they're not pre-approved, but because, yeah, they can take yours, you down. Yours are oh, live. Yeah. Yours are live. Yeah. yeah. So we have the benefit of of recording it first. Yeah. But yeah. It's because yours are live. So yeah. what happens if you deviate? Well, the club get get fined. Really? Like someone will actually like go watch 
Uh, yeah, sometimes. Like Tota. Sometimes, yeah. I they can would, see that, yeah. They would send somebody sitting at the back mm. checking your script if you're sticking to the script. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. Yeah. But, uh, but you do some like crowd interaction stuff. I what do. Yeah, that? Crowd's fine. At That's least okay. you don't so far, <laughs> touch, right? touch anything sensitive. Well, there's no way sensitive. they can control that, right? You have to self-censor you can, there. Yeah, but and also make sure you don't put it online. It's really the online, like, if you go viral, like some like some clip that's quite a quite sensitive mm. or that's some topic you shouldn't touch on, which is a lot. <laughs> that's a, it's <laughs> it very limited. Everything. Yeah, it's very limited. Yeah, right? so if you post online and they see it, they're like, "Yeah, you can." Yeah. But through experience, like in repetition, do you get a clearer and clearer sense of where the lines are, and you kind of can navigate within those kind boundaries of, better? Well, obviously, all the curse word. Like shit, fuck, and all all those. Um, oh, you it, can't curse. No. Oh, definitely so you have to be not. Clean. It has to be really clean. Even in English. Y- yeah. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, and also, um, obviously, you can't touch on LGBTQ. Mm-hmm. You can touch on, you know, just things that people might get offended. Anything that will stir with. the pot. Yeah, like for example, oh, uh, there was one time this chi- this comedian said something about like Chinese people love money and we're like greedy, you know, in terms of money. Then they're like, oh, you can't say that. Like that kind of thing. Really? To that extent? Yeah. And any adult topic, for example, I guess, I have a joke. I remember I submitted. It's really about me. Like I'm 35. You know, I'm getting like my body's dropping, my 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 skin's dropping. I'm saying like my my boobs. <laughs> I'm trying to say my boobs dropping. I, I'm not even mentioning boobs, right? I'm just saying like I, I want to get this tattoo, and I see like tattoo ideas of girls getting tattoos like right here, <laughs> right? I said I can't get that. I'm 35. Like five years later, I have to get a new one, <laughs> right? That's the joke, and they they're like yeah. no. No, they deleted the joke. They're like, you can't do this. this is-, is it because of tattoo or they, is it because No, of- they say it's too dirty. People would think about your boobs. I'm like, what? Huh. <laughs> think about like a sagging, dropping boobs. Like, okay. <laughs> but is that that particular venue saying no, that? Because they want to protect. It's not venue. No? It's the, yeah. It's okay. the- we ch- we so curse it's- a lot on this show. Uh-oh. That's fine. Like podcasts, like I don't think people. It's can- still under the radar. <laughs> I think, I think yeah. there's a different standard. Yeah. I think there's a different standard. Yeah. Between live shows, because when we had Frank on, he was kind of saying something similar. But I think these live, in person events, I think they they they're just more strict and more sensitive about. Yeah. Those. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's weird, but it's yeah. it's similar to how movies or even commercials. Mm. You have to go. You have the sun sun he, right? Yeah. So you have to go through all these uh, steps to make sure that you know you you're not talking about anything that's overly sensitive. Yeah. The actors need to cover up their tattoos. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that. So it makes sense that if you're doing stand up and like you said, it's in a live venue where they have no control over. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. That's and, crazy though. And also like people, like they're sometimes they're not even afraid of these content. They're more afraid of audiences that's gonna like report. Mm. Like there sometimes after show there will be audience calling like offended right or something. yeah and then they be called like one two three four five which is like a <laughs> line for the city whatever then they oh. call the the city mm. line and say hey like I was at this comedy show and somebody made fun of single people <laughs> you know like, <laughs> what <something> like, <laughs> right it's like is that like Chinese China's version of cancel culture yeah 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 except or, that or it's just... it's worse <laughs> it's worse uh, the consequences are worse. Mm. Right, like the club get fine, the the comedian might not work, but yeah, you know, it's it's weird because sometimes they will connect things to, like you said some joke that it's not even it, you didn't even mean that way. Then they would connect it to like a political way yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. They take it that, out of that's, context. That's the worst scenario. That's yeah. Scary. Yeah. So what what makes you keep doing stand up comedy then? Um, I I just love comedy. You know, I always loved stand-up comedy. Um, I started off, uh, I, I got all the followers uh, because I started off getting some like uh, Western comedy. Then I subtitled them. So I do like clips and I subtitle them. Then I put it online and people watch it. Mm. So like what, what you're a fan of, right? The other comedians yeah. and you just subtitle. Yeah. yeah. Who, who are you a fan of? Oh, so many. Um I was obsessed with Joan Rivers for a while. 
Uh, John Rivers. I really like. I can see that. I really like Dave Attell <laughs> for some reason. You know, I like him. Uh, Louis C.K. is one of my favorites. Same here. Like in in terms of just the writing, it's like perfect yeah. writing. Um, yeah, so many people. Uh, there are a lot of new people actually coming up. There's a there's a guy who does uh, crowd work, uh, Jeff Akuri. Like it's a really new guy. Um, yeah, so many so many people. Um, comedy, yeah. So I, I always love comedy, and um, so one of my comedian friends, Storm Shu. So he's the one of the first people who started doing English comedy. Um, then he was like, "You should, you should start comedy. You should like try it. You should like to try it." I remember um, 2019. I had this video went viral. It's me, my wedding speech. And I did like a funny kind of six I saw minutes. That video. Yeah, That's a really good one. Like yeah. a funny speech. Then that went viral. And uh, yeah, my, my friend was like, you should come for open mic. And as you try, you love comedy. Why don't you do it? So I tried one English comedy. Then yeah, and I loved it. And since then I started doing it. Yeah. For English comedy here, like what's the crowd like? Is it mostly expats or is it um, a lot of just Chinese people who understand English? At the beginning was... More expats than Chinese audience. Now it's like half half, mm. and sometimes it's it's even like a full room of Chinese audience. Nice. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. I mean even <clears throat> even before when we were talking about podcast listeners, a lot of our subscribers are Chinese mm. that speak English yeah. or learning English or somewhere exactly. in between, and we, that surprised us because when we first started the show. Being in China, speaking English, we did not think that we're going to hit this market. Yeah. But all of a sudden, it turns out 80% of our listeners or 70% of our listeners are local or abroad Chinese. Interesting. So it was very surprising. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever, if you look at your sort of, you know, suju, if you see anything like patterns like that at all. Um, my Chinese social media, obvious all the followers are Chinese. Um, you know, it's interesting, like sometimes you go to a stand-up comedy show um, and a lot of Chinese audience come just to learn English, <laughs> which is kind of weird, you know, like what, what can you learn well, from? <laughs> we are the educators now. <laughs> yeah. It's illegal to have classes. <laughs> it's really <you> know? <laughs> weird, right? Yeah, but, but people come and they're like, oh, I want to improve my <laughs> listening skills or something like that, right? So um, that, that, was, that was interesting. Do they get your sense of humor though? Like, do they get the punchlines, the jokes? That's that's another thing. Um, most of the times, like sometimes you go to a comedy show, then there's like more international audience. Sometimes it's like full Chinese room. Then you can tell the punchlines work so differently. Yeah, you, sometimes mm. you be struck, so you have to adjust your set mm. a little bit. So sometimes you see a full crowd of Chinese people, you need to adjust your set to them. Yeah, because the sense of humor is very different. Very different than even the choices of using words. Like you need to make some words easier. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That must be a huge part. Like the, the difference in culture, right? Well, between Eastern and Western senses of humor. I've always thought that humor was one of the most difficult art forms there is. And in terms of like films and awards, like Oscars and stuff like that, I almost felt like comedies never got their just due. In these industries, I just feel like people don't take it as seriously as a drama, right? When you look at the awards that are given. Yeah. But I think like humor, comedy is so hard to do. Like the timing, the language, the, you know, everything is, has to be, and it's different from region to region. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you find that like a difficult hurdle? Because you're kind of in between where you're probably getting both audiences. You're getting the Western audience and the Eastern audience. Like how do you balance that? Like when, when you do comedy in Shanghai. The international audiences, the, the good thing is they get a lot of those more Chinese jokes. So if you do a lot of jokes about China, about the China and the East and the West cultural differences, they all get it. This January, actually, no, the, the Christmas, after Christmas, I went to Ireland. I did the set in Ireland. So I was, I find it struggling because I've been doing comedy here for the past few years. Then I went to Ireland. I'm like, oh, what, what jokes? I, should I should I do there? You know that that will work. So I pick because they the, the club only gave me like five minutes. So I picked a few jokes and I did it, and then it went really well. 
Um, <laughs> but I know those jokes, a lot of those jokes would not work very well here. Mm. Oh, interesting. To the Chinese audience. And yeah. also, I think just the sense of humor is very different. Like Bill Burr used to say, like, the Irish audience are the toughest. Just not only the toughest, and they're the most fun and like just a lot of comedians' favorite uh, crowd. Really? Yeah. Because they can take a joke better. Yeah. They feel like, oh, yeah. They can take a like joke. Like you can say something really mean and they'll just yeah. like, they'll laugh. They at it. love you like ripping them through. <laughs> but Chinese audience, they have to listen to something super clean and super nice. Mm -hmm. When you have a Chinese audience, you have to be friendly. You have to be likable. I almost think you have to, it's, it's like the comedy comes from an intelligent pun almost, right? It's mm -hmm. like, it's like a smart way of playing on a word or on a thought as yeah. opposed to sometimes in, in uh, Western humor, just a, a very dirty thought that takes you by surprise is enough or something like that, right? Yeah. I think it's just, just the, the, that level is just so different. Well, there's a lot of that. I think that, <clears throat> I mean, then you get into this, this, um, whole topic of of humor and you can have a drama like some of the best dramas have really iconic moments of humor so there's a lot of stuff in here and of course you practice a certain form of it i think what fascinates me is a few things one is like relating to your audience mm. because anytime you're telling a story you've really got like the most powerful stories tell you something about yourself that you always knew but it wasn't really on the surface and so something that they may not have thought about before, but it's them. And when you can highlight these things, I, I don't think it matters like what race it is, right? Irish, Chinese, but that that universal element yeah, that's of like, more relating universal. to your audience. Yeah. And then you start thinking about like co comedy is just so fascinating because you watch something and like, what does it tell you about people? I think it's an, it's totally an art because you watch maybe one of your skits or, or sets, sorry, and then... It's like you really understand human nature. And part of our show is really just having more long form. You're much more efficient about it because you've done all the hard work to distill it down into a story. But we're having honest conversations with people like yourself because we're just trying to get down to the root of human nature so that we can understand ourselves ba better and then we can maybe just get a little bit better. So I think humor just gives you more insight. Maybe it's about like, don't take yourself so seriously. Or like, yeah, I do act like that, you know? It's mm. really interesting. Yeah, when when I was in Ireland, I obviously, I, I observe a lot. So then I try to find the interest things I can, I can rip, <laughs> you know, I can like <laughs> rose, whatever. Yeah, because, yeah, um, but like here, I have to talk about something that's more cute. <laughs> like here, the audiences love more cuter and f more friendly stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's weird because I think it's also the audience are so used to vetted content. Mm. So they, they're they so used to clean content. So when they see something that's like harsh or edgy, then they're like, oh, like... <laughs> they, it's they, uncomfortable. They don't, yeah, it's really uncomfortable to them and they get offended they get offended on others' behalf. Then it just happens a lot. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know they were that. Like the crowd here was that sensitive. It, it. Yeah. I didn't know that. It didn't used to be like this, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I remember I going to like comedy shows, uh, maybe 2013, 14, here, and uh, I can see like the, the the audience is like having the best time. Like whatever jokes, they just crack. But now it's you can you can find that people are just they they crave more like clean clean. Do you think it's a content. generational thing or it whatever? can be? Also, I think it's just people are so used to because they started watching stand up comedy through mm -hmm. the TV show mm -hmm. Xiao Guo's TV show, and that's very clean. That's comedy. heavily vetted. Very clean comedy. Yeah. So it's like, oh, my girlfriend, oh, my mom, you know, <laughs> just mm -hmm, like this mm -hmm. kind of... Um, like a sitcom, like... Very, like... very... Um, it's not sitcom, you know, yeah. uh, 脱口秀大会, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the show name. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. No, but I mean like the humor is like Oh, yeah. And... It's very, very clean. Yeah, you're It's right. like growing pains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Full house. Like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very We're giving away our age with the full house. <laughs> because there's different forms of media and content and then if all of that stuff is being edited down right when move and when every movie is coming and every tv show is going through the same betting process so they're just not exposed to stuff and so like imagine a child 
listening to curse words for the first time. Like the words suck. Like when I was seven, like that was like the the worst word. Like ever. someone said, I'd be like, "Oh, mom, 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 you said, oh my god, like really? you know, like I would just." It was like a, it was like a, a bomb. Really, yeah. suck mm. the word suck. Yeah. Wow. Wow. How old were you? Were you like, <laughs> I like, like three years old. I remember. I remember. I remember. He's like last year. <laughs> I remember. I was in second grade. <laughs> I hope my mom's not listening to this one, but I was in second grade, and then I don't know. I opened up the dictionary, and I came across the word breast, but then I was like, "Hey, you know, like, hey, Micah, look over here. It's." Breast, what is it? You know, we were like giggling like little kids. We're like, Breast, <laughs> like, Breast. <laughs> oh my God. I remember when I was like seven, my dad got mad at me because I was like, because <laughs> they, they bought, like, I remember they bought strawberries and they put it on the table. And I came in and I said, Wow, Tao Mei. Then my dad was like, What did you just say? Because they thought I said, Wow, Tao, oh, right? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then my dad was so mad. Oh, and that was, that was like explaining. I said, No, I said, Wow, Tao Mei. <laughs> <laughs> There's a space. <laughs> then, yeah. My dad was like still angry. I don't know. I, yeah, mm. that, that really, um, I remember that really well for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> what was your upbringing like? Was it, I mean, like, what drives a person? To become a comedian in the first place, right? So, um, <laughs> my dad is from Shenyang, oh, so Dongbei. Okay, and Dongbei is like you know comedy, the, mm -hmm. the the land of comedy. So my dad is like a naturally funny person, and and I remember like when I was a kid, like my my favorite entertainment on TV would just be Xiaoping and all the sketches and all the Xiangsheng, all the the, mm. the Chinese stand up co comedies. So I remember that was my favorite things to watch since I was a kid. So you grew up in Dongbei? No, I grew up in Jiangsu province. Oh, yeah. okay. My parents are both Dongbei. Oh. Dongbei. So since since you're over a kid, you had a big like comedic influence. Like, yeah, I think it's mostly from my dad. Wow. Yeah. Nice. He just he just be funny the whole time. <laughs> Even his accent is funny, you know. Oh. Like Dongbei accent is naturally funny. I just think the Dongbei accent is yeah. cool. I love really the funny. Accent. And then there's that one guy. That was really famous, like some Liu Lao Ger. Oh, Liu Lao Ger. And, and it's just really funny. And then for a while, a few years ago, I was traveling up north all the time for work. So I'd go up to Shenyang. I love hearing them talk. It's just like, it's, it's funny, <laughs> it's right? Really they funny. just seem like they're in funny. a good mood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I like, I like that they're very direct. They don't talk in circles, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 They're like the Irish of. Chinese. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> That's yeah. so funny. The uh, are, are you, have your parents been? You know, what did they think about you pursuing a career in comedy? Were they very supportive of that, or were they uncomfortable with that in any way? No, they didn't care. But <laughs> but last year, since that happened to me, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they really cared. Mm. But yeah, they were they were fine. Like I don't really talk to them about this, and they don't really ask me about this too. Yeah, I don't think they get it that much. Mm -hmm. too because i do mostly english comedy do you ever do so, jokes about like your parents oh yeah because we talk <laughs> yeah, i talk about my mom all the time to the yeah. point where my mom was like like she'll call me up and she's like look stop using material about me on your show okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's funny because i thought this was going to be the one episode that you wouldn't bring talk up about your mom, mom. <laughs> yeah. and you happen to find a way to yeah, always yeah. always finding yeah. a way every single really? episode yeah. without exaggeration every single episode oh some Floyd things here going <laughs> yeah, <that's a> <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's some oh you think i'm messed up <laughs> these two <laughs> why do you talk about your mom so much why do i oh that's a that's a powerful question. Her secondary <laughs> career How much time do you have? Then? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she's had such a powerful influence, and she continues to wield a powerful influence, both in incredibly positive ways, and then in ways where I've had to like basically move halfway across the world and like fix myself. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, you know? get fixed? <laughs> <laughs> well, this show is. This but is again, but again, if you think I'm broken, these these <laughs> two, these two are just they're like glass. That's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> like. The, in the last four shows, on two of them, each of these guys had meltdowns. <laughs> <laughs> and the show became meltdown number one. Yes. And then meltdown number two. The difference is our meltdowns is true. pale in comparison to your meltdowns. <laughs> <laughs> your meltdowns are like Mount Olympus, yeah. like erupting. Yeah. What is right? this? <laughs> it's a therapy. This show, is, <laughs> this show is all about meltdowns. Actually, yeah. Some of the episodes get into this weird therapy world yeah. where all of a sudden it's like, we feel like we're alone and like, I've been crying all night last <laughs> night. I'm like, well, hold on, we, we're recording this, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I think that's why we get fans. People like it when we break down. 
I assume you guys all grew up in U.S. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like even you growing up there, your parents still like the Chinese, <laughs> the oh. Chinese parenting still influence you, oh, right? Yeah. Mm, absolutely. Oh, yeah. My, my parents felt that they had to represent all of China. In my little town in the U.S., they had to bring like the full force of China and five thousand years of history, oh right? My God. And like, just so that I wouldn't forget. That's the thing. Like, I, I like, even myself when I go abroad, I feel like I re I represent China, right? I feel like a obliged, you know. It's like my duty to, re, re, you know, I I I, I will like, walk more carefully. I will look at like red lights. I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. not walking. Even all the white people are <laughs> yeah, going. Yeah, like I want to set a good example. <laughs> yeah, <right>? exactly. <laughs> You're like about to speak. Like, yeah, no, I'll hold that back. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, no, but, but, what, you, but why did we like? Why did we get in? Like, why did China get into spitting in the first place? You know, like why did we get to the point where we're I like, know. oh wait a minute, I'm just gonna like shit on the street. No, 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 I can't do that. <laughs> no, but let me ask you, Don. Like, have you always felt that way, or is it more because of like recent tensions and stuff? You feel like more of a need. No, to I always about? feel that way. Yeah, it's almost like because as a Chinese, you grow up, you don't grow up as an individual. <laughs> You know, everything is about a group. It's about the country. It's about the nation. Like whatever you do, it's about that, right? <laughs> mm. If you grow up, you're raised that way. You're always like your behavior represent your class or your school. You know, it's mm. always that. You never feel like you're you grow up as an individual for some reason. Mm. So it's always the GT Zhui. Mm. That's what we is say. that like part of confusion? Because I I I also got that. It's like if you disappoint, it's like you shame. Like, Not just you. You shame yeah. like yourself, your family, yeah. your, your broader <laughs> yeah, clan, yeah, yeah. the but entire see, country. For me, growing up in the States, I never felt that way. Because I grew up there, right? That's all I knew. That was the, the Western world was yeah. the only world I knew growing up. You know, for the most part. Um, but I never felt that way. But now, whenever I go abroad, after having lived like, you know, 15 years here, I, I definitely feel that way. I feel like, oh, I need to represent. I need to, like, I need to let people know, like, you know, like... We're cool, you know. Like, That's so weird, right? <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird. But I never growing up, I never felt that way. It's so weird. You know what's funny? Like I always think, I sometimes you know this is a really bad <laughs> bad thought. But I sometimes think I wish the first generation, the immigrant, the immigrants, the first immigrants generation in the U.S. is Dongbei people. <laughs> what? Why? Because <laughs> you know, we're like gangsters. We're mm. like right. If you look at us, we're like, what the fuck you're looking at? You know, we're <laughs> like, and we drink and we're funny. Yeah, you, know? you don't want to fuck with Dongbei people at yeah, all. Yeah, right. So I wish that's the first impression ever made. <laughs> you know, the yeah. U.S. Uh, yeah, yeah I, th I feel like Dongbei people now that you think about it, it's like it's they're like a mix of Irish and Russian. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they're tough. Yeah, yeah they're tough. Yeah. But, and we're know, tall, you know. <laughs> so unfortunately, we got people like Eric representing China in, the, in, in <laughs> yeah, in Texas. Like, if, if like don't if don't make people were the first immigration, then you know I think the stereotype would completely different. Yeah. I think like, you should do a, dude, I think you should do a, a sketch, sketch on that. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should do a sketch yeah. of the first immigrants. That's so good. Right. Don't make people. Yeah. That's like, so good. Like um, the all the all the movies, the TV shows, all the characters yeah. based on. Chinese people in the U.S. were totally different. Would be kind of like the Italian mobs, right? Totally. Right, yeah. right. Totally. It would be don't I was, hands. So Don, like, I don't know. I don't like from what I've seen of you and your work. You seem to have like a, a pretty Western lens through your comedy. I think the way you tell jokes, yeah. your observations. I mean, even your English is like perfect. So, like, how growing up here, how how did that happen? I grew up in a small town in Jiangsu. Um, and uh, we didn't have access to foreign teachers, you know, English. Like, there's not a lot of Western cultures at all. So I, you have to look for it. So I remember growing up, I was always interested in, di you know, dialect and languages. Um, so when we started English lessons, that was back then, and my time was like middle school, the first year of middle school. That's the time when you start the English lessons. Um, but... My mom is a teacher. He's a, she's a Chinese teacher in high school. Uh, so she got her colleague, an English teacher colleague. So when, when we're like primary school, five, the fifth grade, then she started to teach a few, few of us in her home, at her home. Then we would be going there to learn some English there. So I remember I always just loved, I loved English classes. Mm. So um, then growing up, 
Uh, I remember I was just like trying to look for English songs, English shows, movies. You watched Friends, didn't you? I watch everything. Yeah, I watch all the shows, and that that's that's where I learned the English really. Um, wow. Yeah. You know, I've met a couple of people like that.、Um, even my coworker, great English. And I'm like, oh,、so、did you study? Or she's like, no, just watching DVDs. Yeah, watching. That's how you、yeah. learn it. Wow.、Really. So it wasn't even from spending time abroad. It was just I, watching I, TV. I haven't really spent spent a lot of、uh, time abroad at all. Like I, I didn't study abroad. I haven't really worked abroad. You know, that's crazy. I because if I, didn't, if I didn't know anything about you, and I was just talking, like which I am, I'm meeting you first time today. I would think you have spent a lot of time abroad. Yeah, a lot of people assumed. Yeah, yeah. but that's really. Because you need to, when you learn a language, you need to create a language environment. That's what we say, right?、Mm -hmm. So, how do you create that when you don't have that? It's you just constantly watch the TV shows, the movies.、Oh. So that's like a dialogue for you. You constantly watch. And I think、there. she watched a lot of American. Yeah. Because she has that、Your、bit of the Southern American sometimes slipping in. Yeah. That I noticed. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's an American, right?、Accent. You hear that, right? Yeah, I watched a lot of American TV shows. And movies.、Yeah. <laughs> what, what was your favorite? Do you have a favorite? Oh, so many! I remember starting. I I, I probably started actually the the first American TV show, Prison Break. <laughs> That's a lot that, of Chinese people. That first was one. Huge. huge. Yeah. Then that Lost. Was, yeah. Yeah. Lost. Yeah. Twenty、um, four. So many like Desperate Housewives.、Uh, House is actually my favorite show. House. Oh, the the doctor. MD. Yeah. 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 That that's interesting. It's it's like my one、yeah. of my favorite. Yeah. What about like English or American shows attracted to you? Attracted you to that? I remember first time I watched Prison Break, I was like, "Holy shit, you can shit on the government!" That <laughs> 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 was the first time I was like,、okay. "Oh, what?" <laughs> yeah, that was mind blowing. Really? You know? So it's a completely new concept to you, right? Yeah, you can see like the corruption. You can you can show all those. <laughs> that、yeah. to me, like, I was in like, public. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. So I remember, and and I remember just like the because it's so different from the Chinese shows. The Chinese shows are family friendly, right? Mo、yeah. All of them from top yeah, yeah. to bottom. Well, you, but like, but it's changed a lot、yeah. because there was that recent hit that show. I forgot、yeah. the name of it,、um, but it was all about the corruption. Tanhua. Yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But even before that, there was yeah, another yeah. one that was all about yeah. corruption. Oh yeah, yeah, the what's that one again? Like the, the mobster one. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and that's why I think my understanding is that. Earlier on, Hong Kong shows were so popular,、yeah. and then it became the Korean shows. And the Korean ones these days, like the dark ones, are like so, there's so much dark. Yeah, they're so dark. I mean, like the the killing, the gore. I mean, it's like you know, and like Koreans stuff, know how to do like dark, like, really、yeah. dark, like like yeah,、Sick. gory, gory kind、yeah. of shit. Yeah, like old boy. Yeah, old, yeah I was yeah, just yeah, about yeah, to yeah, say old boy.、Geez. Yeah, there's one called. My mind was blown.、Oh, so、totally, like, blown totally. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah, so like, twisted. You, yeah, yeah, it's so twisted. And then, like, there's recently one called like Moving, I think, where like these people have superpowers and the government and like all this stuff, and then they're just like, I mean, like hundreds of people die in like five minutes. Oh, yeah, it's really crazy. I love that. <laughs> yeah, no. So this, I feel like there's a rebellious streak in you a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Oh, I've been growing up. I've been always kind of different, like from everywhere, everyone else in my school or class. Like the teachers always said, this kid has too much personalities. They always say that, like too strong character.、Uh, that's the word they always use on me. Yeah, but but then you know, after I grow up, that I meet a lot of international people. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you're like, I'm normal. Yeah, yeah. Now you found your tribe. Yeah. yeah, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm so, so funny. funny. And I'm actually a nerd between the, yeah, <laughs> you know,、yeah. among them. Yeah. Yeah, you're actually like like subdued yeah. compared yeah, to that.、Right? Yeah. Justin had the reverse experience, so he grew up in like in in Jersey with a bunch of just kind of Dongbei types, right? And、like、then、really、he goes, loud yeah, loud、stuff. and just busting、yeah. each other's balls and stuff like that. And then he goes to like California, and then he noticed like people just like start like keeping their distance from him because <laughs> they're like he's so aggressive. Yeah, because even even in America, between the East Coast and the West Coast,、yeah. there's a big culture difference. Yeah, and so I grew up in the East Coast, and I went, when I went to the West Coast, I was like, I was like the most docile kid amongst like my group in the East Coast. But when I go to West Coast, I'm like、You're、the most rambunctious, like <laughs> alpha, like crazy、yeah. guy, and it was so、yeah. weird for me to be that. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting because I、like, growing up、uh, in Jiangsu Province and knowing my heritage is from Dongbei. 
Mm. And that that is kind of the same, mm-hmm. you know. Mm. Like you go to the school, then you're so different because they're all from local southern. They're southern kids, especially the girls. They're cute and they're, yeah, you know, very gentle. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm tall, you know. <laughs> so were you were you like a bully then? What was, what was your... No, no, I wasn't a bu- bully, but like you know. Let's just say no boys were interested in me. <laughs> well, they were probably, I'm sure they were interested. They were probably just like, yeah. um, like scared, intimidated. No, intimidated, no. Yeah. They're, they're always into those girls who are like super cute and tiny. Yeah. yeah always. You, don't you have a bit about that? Somewhere? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you, is that through your, just your upbringing, your observations growing up that, yeah. you know, the difference in Asian, when it comes to like, the beauty men, standards, right? Yeah, and the beauty standards of what they find attractive in, let's say, an Asian girl yeah. is wildly different between like what, like foreigners, yeah. Westerners versus uh, Asians. I, yeah. I, I feel that that's too. actually a really interesting topic that, that yeah. I would love because to talk it, about. Yeah, it and like I want to hear your response and and a little bit of context is that uh, a couple of weeks ago we had another guest who's a friend of the show's, um, and she's like a from Nanfang, a mm. southern girl, but she's like pretty, yeah, you know, she's she's a bit rebellious type. Um, and we were talking about like stuff like Junan and mm. like Sha and yeah. then like t- like different perceptions, like well, how to like what kind of guys do girls like, et cetera, et cetera. And now we're kind of talking about the other yeah. sort of side of it. Yeah, I mean, like I I think I grew up just being tall, you know, and kind of I remember when I was a kid, I was kind of kind of like a tomboy. So it's hard for me to like sad you. For people who are not watching video, she just did a little yeah, yeah. like a yeah, shake. Yeah. Like that, that was as sad as version. she can get. Yeah. That's by so sad This is yeah. as sad yeah. as she gets. By the way, she has a Perrier <laughs> bottle. She didn't ask us to open it. Whereas like Julius is like, oh yeah, can you open yeah, the you bottle? Can with that <laughs> no, she did. No, but she says that that is an example of sad okay. Yeah, so let's yeah. let's not let's not. You no, know. but she said she that was that's let's not misrepresent her here. That's something that she would do if she wanted, to, like, what girls would do to maybe get closer to someone. Mm-hmm. So she did say that. Yeah. I don't know if she does it herself, but she's an example. That's so weird, you know, because, like, it's like Chinese men, they're more into girls who are, like, like weak. You know, they like weaker. Well, I think so that Asian they... men in general. Like, yeah. East, far Eastern Asian men. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's just Chinese. <laughs> no, it's weird because, like, when I grew up, this was something like even me growing up in the in the states. I was still I had more, I had more in common with like the sexual taste of like Asian men, far mm. East Asian men. So taste. no, what, what I'm what saying. What do you mean exactly? <laughs> okay, okay. Sexual. Let me explain myself. Wait a minute. Let me explain myself. <laughs> hey. No, so growing up between my white friends and me, whenever they would say like when we we're talking about let's say a particular Asian girl. Or Asian woman, they would be like, "Oh my god, that girl's so hot!" And they would show me, and I'd be like, "No, that doesn't really do it for me." And then when I show them of an Asian lady that I thought was really attractive, they'd be like, "You like that? Yeah. Like that doesn't do that for me <laughs> either." Yeah, 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 yeah. And it wasn't just one time; it was like routinely that was the case with different, you know, <laughs> Western people. Where I realized, okay, I just have different like tastes. Justin's like, oh, I like sexual her. taste. Bye bye, nun nun. Oh, bye bye, nun nun. <laughs> it would say bai yo show. Yeah. Right? It's like white and young. You know, it has to be young and mm. uh, skinny. That's, uh, that's the time. Yeah, skinny's a thing, huh? That's skinny. A- and you have to look certain, like innocent look. Yeah. Almost like, like cute, right? cute, right? So it's like a weird, like a man's. I don't know. It's like a they they want a virgin. You know, remember back then mm. everybody wants a virgin. Still now, like a lot of people still. Mm. So it's kind of like that. Like they're yeah. fucking border borderline. Yeah, pedoph- that's like pedophiles. that's like it's not just a stereotype, but I think that there's a lot. There's some that patriarch, whatever the word is, right? There's some stuff in there. Patriotic. <laughs> or just feeling of dominance. Yeah, 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 like like yeah. unhealthy yeah. dominance. Yeah. Yeah, like more like overly traditional. Well, I remember, I think it was a recent conversation. It was about how my friends back in the day or how when I was back in the States, I'm from New York, and we would meet a girl. And if, you know, we die talk afterwards, be like, yo, she she knew what she was doing in bed. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You'd be like, oh, damn, that's awesome. 
right? It's like a good thing. Yeah. If the girl knew what she was doing in bed. Yeah. But then I had this, like a similar conversation in China, and it would be like if she knew too much in bed, it would be like a no no. It'd be like yeah. like a negative. Thing. Yeah, like a, like sort of like oh she got around she, too much. Yeah, she's she's a little she's a little too good, you know, like yeah. <laughs> she's a lot of practice or something, yeah. right? You know what I mean? I think that's one thing about like there's an analysis. Uh, about this, like men want to find, like especially a lot of Chinese men want to find a um, girl who has no experience, so that you don't know I'm shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's horrible. You, see, that's bad. you have experienced other. Hey, come on. Ones. Let's let's be honest. I'm sure a lot of guys feel that way to a degree, right? It's in there somewhere. For sure. Yeah, it yeah. could be. Because we're all be. like kind of self-conscious about like, you know. Don't put your own insecurity. No, dude, don't, don't even try to front. Don't even try to front. <laughs> no, but I, I feel like this gap in terms of like what we find attractive yeah. is growing even now. It's like not even when I was growing up. Because when I look back to the States and on social media in the Western world, I find like the trend now is like these huge butts, like really, uh, really curvy, like, yeah. like huge thighs, huge butts. And like everyone's like, oh, that's like the attractive thing, like Kim Kardashian, right? Like yeah. how she got. I don't find that attractive at all. Like, I, I, and and so I just find this huge disparity in that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's growing even wider now. For yeah. Me. yeah. Did you what what kind of entertainment or you know movies, TV shows, or celebrities you grew up watching? Uh, all American, basically. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, the Asian ones would be like you know you, you know your Jackie Chan's, your Jet Li's, stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. Like Hong Kong, like some Hong Kong movies yeah, yeah, and TV Hong Kong, shows. Yeah, yeah. Even in those old Hong Kong TV shows, movies, like the the girls are more like pure looking, mm -hmm. right? They have yeah. like very little. It's makeup. all brainwashing. Yeah. It's all brainwashing, right? And I think like if you, they always give the example of like in the 1800s and you look at some of the portraits of the European women and they were, they were totally different than the ones that are now, right? Yeah. Like, like we, in this more modern generation, I think a lot of people in the West, they like pe the girls that work out and that have yeah. muscles and all that stuff. So I think yeah. like there's a lot of cultural differences and it's how your brain It's what you see. Exactly. And then a lot of what you see is generated by marketing and, you know, people that have other interests. So I agree with you, but I would question how much of it is really see because I think I'd be a good example of that. I grew up in the States. I wasn't watching Asian film and television a lot, like very little compared to the amount I watched American shows and TV and movies. So I was fully absorbed into all the media that they would be consuming as well. But I still turned out very different in terms of But you're of just day. one example. I'm I know, just saying, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that like no marketing is 100% successful. Any commercial that goes out there, it's not like 100% of the people are going to buy that thing. Even if like 1% of the people buy whatever they see on, on a commercial, they've already achieved success. So I think that there's a lot of that that's shaping us. And then the forces behind what's shaping us, it's like out of our control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My analysis is... I, I mean, I asked the wrong question. It should be, what kind of porn do you watch? Oh, that's ah, really the ah, question, accurate, right? Accurate, yeah. Because yeah. that's what really influenced accurate. you sexually. Your that's sexual that's the real truth, right there. Yeah, I accurate. Think so. You didn't watch. You didn't watch Japanese white porn. porn. I'll be. I'll be happy to say it if we all go around the table to say it, including you, Don. She just. If we cut, all. If we all. She just. Cut, agree to you this. started she, watching. This is, right? That's called an honest. Like she cut through all of our <laughs> yeah. facade, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of our bullshit. I was like blaming it on mass marketing. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. No. No. We're like blaming it on everything yeah. else, but it's like it really comes down yeah, to what porn you watch. It really is. But it's not. But it's it's kind of the chicken or the egg kind of thing because obviously the porn you watch influences you. But then your decision to watch that gravitate towards that type of porn, there must be some other influential factor that would drive that motivation or that attraction yeah. in the first well, place. Well, the best right? question then is at what age <laughs> you start watching porn? <laughs> Justin's like four. <laughs> I think very typically like most kids who grew up early in the teenage. States. We, we, yeah, early teens. Yeah. Sure. yeah. yeah. For, I think the first one was, you know, like me finding magazines, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Sixth like grade. American. Usually it's about sixth grade. Yeah. Sixth, seventh grade. Yeah, yeah. Pretty early on. What kind of... <laughs> so you, exactly. You still didn't answer. No, okay. No, again. Okay, let's make a deal. Love that. She's I like, would... <laughs> I, am, I am happy. I'm happy to say if we all go around and say, yeah. I don't want to be single. Fine, I'm here. fine. I, don't, I have nothing to hide. Hmm? I got nothing to hide. Okay. So when I first... Okay, so my first discovery <laughs> of porn was actually like, uh, was Playboy and Penthouse, but like the American issues mm. of that. 
And then as I matured, it definitely is heavily weighted towards Asian pornography. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. What, what's the... And I don't know why. And again, it goes back yeah. to that thing where this was something I noticed very early on that... What kind of Asian pornography? And a lot of my... <laughs> that's, it's weird because a lot of my that's Asian a... friends growing up... Well, not like growing up, but like a lot of Asian friends I made later on when I grew up, they were still like very attracted to like white women. Mm. You know, your, your classic, you know, Caucasian beauties. And for me, like, yeah, they're, 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 they're hot. They're beautiful, of course. But I was still almost like more or less attracted to to Asians. For, okay, so it was really but, weird. like, what kind of like like Asian? Because like, okay, no, no, let's go around and then we can decipher. No, no, let's no, 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 no. no you guys, you guys are trying to pull broad. a fast one on me. Why now? are you saying you guys? I'm silent here. That's so broad. What do you mean, like Asian? Like that? Like that's like saying nothing. Well, that's you, like saying that's you, like fucking you, saying nothing. You say yours first. That's like saying nothing. I know. I don't want you to get out of it. You say yours first. <laughs> By the way, is there such thing as Irish porn? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there is. <laughs> Just everybody drinking on that. Well, Eric's Eric's trying <laughs> to get out of it. Now. Always a bottle. <laughs> yeah. All right, Eric, you go. You're trying to get out. Look, of it. I'm gonna answer it this way. <laughs> Because I, I I think it's more important to get at the substance of what we're trying to talk oh, well, about. Well, just answer the and question like, You first. just asked some vague, you answered some I vague, gave a very bullshit. direct answer. No, I will say that like I'm, I'm going to offer my own unique angle on this and it's going to be way more like revealing than what you said because it was just such an okay, empty go, just response. Okay, go, stop, stop preluding. <laughs> so I would say that, and you have to bear with me on this, on this narrative, that starting at about, when I was in fourth grade, Jesus, Eric. <laughs> Hold on, listen. This He's is trying to drag it out. When I was in fourth grade, uh, most of the kids in my class were Caucasian, the neighborhood I lived in. And there was a girl that lived sort of down the street and we went to school. And I remember thinking she had blonde hair and she was very tall. And I remember thinking she was very pretty. Like I'm, But I wasn't attracted to girls at that point because I was so young. But I remember thinking very specific, I still remember her name. Like, yeah, she's very attractive. And then when we got into fifth grade, that was the first time where I saw people date. And so there was a guy and a girl and they dated and we're kind of like, that's kind of yucky, you know? Um, and then when I got to sixth grade, I had my first qu crush. And this girl was like one head taller than me. She was a soccer player. She was Caucasian. And I was like so in love with her. And like we were friends. And I mean, I just had no chance. Like she's she, she was going to go for like the eighth grader one. But I remember one time, I think she like, took pity on me and she like gave me a kiss on my cheek or something like that. I was just like in cloud nine, you know? And so like from sixth grade and I had many crushes in middle school, but I was just like this puny little Chinese American kid and didn't have a whole lot of confidence. But I would like, I was just so into all these Caucasian girls, really, really, you know, blondes, whatever, right? Brunettes. Then we got into high school and there was some Asian ABC girls, I was like, oh, they're you know pretty attractive or whatever, you know. And then my first girlfriend wasn't until college actually, and she was actually, she grew up partially in China, Australia, and then the U.S. Was she mixed? No, but she was full Chinese, but she'd grown up a little bit in China. And then you know, like I lived in Argentina for a little bit, and I was just I was blown away, you know, by the women there. I'm still waiting for the porn answer. <laughs> yeah. Some, somehow we've yeah. arrived at Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still waiting somehow for the porn answer. And then, when I moved, and then when I moved here, I think that like my my taste definitely shifted, and and so like then I dated you know the the girls that I dated were all you know Asian, and then you know now I'm married and my wife is Chinese, but you know she spent half her life kind of abroad, but like grew up in China and and actually yeah I mean in this area, that shaped everything and then if you just look at porn stuff i mean you just kind of you know i don't know you just click a couple of buttons you see stuff you know but that i would it, it's like both it's like what, I, so what are you saying what's your <laughs> what, 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 what so kind what of porn, porn do you watch it's a very simple question <laughs> yeah asian and white so both is there do you heavily do you skew one way or lean a little bit i was waiting honestly 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 i was waiting for the punchline. He's, he's like uh, argentina and like, my wife <laughs> I love shit porn. Like, you know, it's like totally like something left field, like out of nowhere, you know? So. Probably like 70 Asian, 30 like other Caucasian, mm. et cetera. But, you know, no, 70 Asian percent Asian, I think. Oh, 70 percent Asian, 30 yeah. percent other? Yeah. Okay. okay. When I was in first grade, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> he's like, I like boys. <laughs> Uh, I've I I was always watching uh, non-Asian. 
Mm. And mm. it wasn't until I moved here that I started switching. So I'm a product of environment. Wow, yeah. interesting. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't watch Asian porn before, mm. but now you're all about it. Now I can. Now I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So basically, it's it's different. It's a different mentality. I think that's crazy. How like your environment? Just yeah. Because like, before, even cause, like when you're, well, even grown. But I, I've said this many times before. Before I moved here, I never dated Asians. I never mm -hmm. was around Asians. I was always dated like South American or white or non Asian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a lover of all. No, I'm, no, no prejudice here. If anyone listens to this episode and finds this uh, what vulgar, vulgar, then I'm blaming it on Don. <laughs> <laughs> or is now vulgar. Yeah, I think it's, just be. It's a, it's open yeah, conversation. We use it as sex education here. <laughs> what? Yeah. What is? Uh, I mean, I know obviously you don't speak for all women. Wait a minute. Why are we jumping into like? We're, we're <laughs> no, going, no. We're, we're gonna we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get our answer. What I'm saying is. In terms of, uh, first, obviously, I want to hear your answer in terms of mm. what kind of porn you watch. But um, in terms of women watching porn in general, is it more common than a lot of men think? That's very interesting because, um, you know, most porns are made for men. So women, most of the time, actually, mm. I, I will speak for a lot of women now, um, don't enjoy watching it that much. Because mm. a lot of them is a little bit even abuse <laughs> abuse oh, you know totally. what i mean yeah. right so it's like you, you you watch it you might you might not enjoy it at all so nowadays i heard a lot of women are start to watch porn that's made for women it's a lot of porn female directors yes. i've seen some articles about that yeah, yeah so i think that's popular that. right how, now how how is it different than let's say the typical porn men would watch to be honest i haven't watched one apparently it's more new, story based yeah 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 it's so more, it's a lot more story a little more romantic yeah but there's Sexual, but it's still very graphic. When you get to it, but then I think there's a whole. I don't know why I did this. Like, yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> He's like, but it's still yeah. graphic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I did that. that. I don't know why I did that. That's so weird. <laughs> it, <laughs> well, it's like the complaint that women often have about men not taking enough time for the foreplay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but okay. For what I what I was told, or not yeah. told, but read, um, basically, it's story based situational based mm. which a lot of some men male porn is like that as well but it's all about that fantasy mm. so it's these improper moments but done tastefully not so aggressively and yeah and that's what i that female uh, porn directors are going that route mm. production quality a little bit higher not just like you know up close and it's more artistic more the artistic shots, and the lighting just, yeah just in general it's a bit more moody as opposed yeah. to R yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That's what I to heard. the point. I think, um, <clears throat> I, I mean, as a Chinese person, I, I say every single Chinese person, the first porn you ever seen is a Japanese porn. Mm. Oh, really? It has to be. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, that's what's going around. <laughs> that's what I was going around. You know, that's the source you resource you yeah. had. Um, so I think most people watch Japanese porn, and it's. It, I always find it really unpleasant. That's how I felt when back in the day. Whenever I watched Asian, I was like, "That's so weird." Like, yeah, I, I'm actually not that into Japanese porn of the Asian porn, but they're the biggest one though. They're the most they common the one. They take their one. porn very seriously. And it, that yeah. one's the most like probably male dominated perspective. Oh, for sure. Right? It's, it, quite, it's, it's, it's quite the Japanese porn gets crazy. Oh, it's pretty and bad. it's all about the school girl. It's like borderline oh. pedophile. Yeah. You know, it's just like a lot of pedophile things in there. So yeah, yeah, it's yeah. really uncomfortable. Yeah. And when you watch it as a female, you're like, am I supposed to like this? You know? Mm. So, but you see a lot of men, like every single man, all the boys, they're all like, ah, oh, this is the thing we watch, you know, and then they learned everything from that. Yeah. Too. The so, mentality comes out from that. Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of really like disrespect mm. in the porn. I mean, I, I, you don't, I, I'm not saying like in sex, you should be like respectful, respectful or something, but just like the kind of thing that they do to women, there's a lot of raping in Japanese porn. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things like Asian culture is like women are like, oh, when they say no, no. but they don't mean no. And that's really bad, I think. And that's really bad signal sent to most young boys when they started watching. They're like, oh, so women, when women say no, they, they didn't mean no. Mm -hmm. They wanted it. So that's always mm -hmm. how we're raised. That's that, mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. I felt like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm Well, I'm curious not to jump off this topic too pr prematurely, but I try to avoid this kind of stuff. But like in your comedy then, is there a message that they're trying to, like a po is there a positive message that you're trying to send to people sometimes? In, uh, in general? Mm -hmm, yeah. 
Like we're changing topics, but yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, like my humor is a lot, a lot of darkness in my humor, but I, I don't know if I'm sending any positive messages at all. Really, it's more just uh, commentary. Like maybe when it comes to women's issue, like I like to send off more positive、mm. image, especially to the women audiences, you know. But、um, yeah, I wouldn't go kind of like, oh, like, you know, 正能量 you know, those Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't go there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Seem like you. So, are there are there a lot of like、um, really good up and coming female comedians in China? Is that like what's that、um, ratio like between I guess men and women in the comedy scene here in China? It was really interesting because I always talk about like women's issue, women's right. On my social media, and we always discuss it because we always say, "Oh, there's a lot of things in China, women's right in terms of women's right. We don't think it's as protected as the Western world, you know, because it's more mature there, mature there because the women's、uh, movement started way earlier, right? So, but in terms of comedy, I see all the misogynist shit happening in West than China." Because China started comedy, stand up comedy, new it's really new、uh, art form. That it's really、um, it's really new. So it started off equally. So、mm. whoever that's good, it it goes up to Xiao Guo or the show, right? So Xiao Guo, you can see a lot of women,、yeah. girl comedians. If anything, I feel like the most famous Chinese comedians are women. Like, exactly right. The 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 KOLs, the influencers now that are comedians、yeah. are women、and、as opposed to male. They're more popular. More popular. More loved.、Yeah. Um, but when, I, for example, same clip I post on Chinese social media, then I post on YouTube or on、mm. Instagram, you always see these comments down below. Oh, women just not funny. I always see this every single on the、really? Western platforms or on both Western platforms. Western platforms. You never seen one single person in China say、yeah. that. I've never seen that, but only in West, I've、mm. constantly seen this. I believe、comments. that because if you just look at like the big comedians in America, let's、yeah. say it's domin, it's male dominated. Yeah, I, I don't、it、really know of any like、yeah. real like maybe Ali Wong or it is,、yeah. but even so, it's even so, but they're、yeah. not even as big. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. And even you go to these most famous women's、uh, clips, then you go go there, all the comments are like, "Women just not funny," blah blah blah. Women always talk about sex. It's like, come on! Like all the men comedians talk about sex all the time. Yeah,、right? yeah, yeah. I'm actually curious.、Uh, staying on this sort of topic, we've kind of danced around this before, but now that we have someone like Don on the show, I, I want to just kind of dig in a little bit deeper. Which is,、uh, how do you feel about male and female equality? Because, like, gender e- equality, for example, I mean, that's always been an issue in the West. Uh, for decades already, and like you kind of touched upon, there was an earlier movement, and here it's it's not really you can't really pinpoint a time、mm-hmm. to any type of movement per se. Yeah. yeah.、Uh, but I always felt, without any statistics, just felt、mm-hmm. there's definitely misogyny. But in terms of like the general public workforce attitude towards, let's say, male and female、uh, positions of power. Or just general、uh, male or female、um, access to different type of career paths. I f- I didn't feel it was as bad as maybe the West. I felt that it was okay. Like for example, when I, whenever working, I always work with female leaders in brands and and stuff like that, and they were very respected and very powerful and really good at what they do.、Uh, I've met a lot of. These kind of positions, and I always thought, well, yeah, it was not that bad here. It didn't seem like it was that obvious. I'm just curious how you feel in general. Is do you feel that that might be a, a correct perception, or do you think I'm still kind of off? I think you're off because we all live in our own bubbles,、mm-hmm. right? So、mm-hmm. you live in that one percent of elite bubble.、Mm-hmm. Of your client is like big international corporates that where their、uh, working environment is more equal. It's more protected. There's there are HRs protecting that shit, but most I would say ninety percent of China, for example, just women going to look for work、mm. nowadays. Like if you go to HR, then you're sitting down in the interview. They always ask you, "Are you, you married? You Do you have a boyfriend?" You you yes, always. Yes, and it's legal to ask, which is absurd. 
Because in the West, it is, you can get sued by that. Mm. You know? So, and, and you can see, constantly you can see the hiring posters here in China. It says, we only want men. And it's like... Oh, they actually say that. They, they actually say, say that, that on poster. Wow, we I did not know that. hire men. And there's a lot of job positions. Uh, for example, you're just out of college or whatever. Then uh, the job position, you can see like the, they want more men. They will say on the positions, we want more men than women. And even for men, for, for women, it should be more higher. You, should, you need to have higher degrees. You need to hire higher. Really? And for men, we actually would love to lower the standard just to get more men in. Mm, that yeah. happens wow. the, most of the job markets. Yeah, Yeah, that's very interesting, Don. Um, I mean, I work with a lot of, I mean, my wife, like I don't work with my wife, but like I've talked to, people kind of in the in the workforce and they really echo your sentiment you know mm. and the 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 recent and and they've experienced exactly what you're saying yeah. like and they ask the questions in a very subtle way no, you know subtle is okay like most but, people don't even ask subtly they just yeah, yeah, ask yeah, yeah. Like, straightforward yeah. Yeah. but but even if they even companies that have international backgrounds like even the ones yeah. you would expect them true, to like true. operate it differently. No, they find a way to ask the yeah. question. It's just very off-putting. And so like one of the narratives I recently heard to really echo what you're saying, and I'm curious if you've heard this, is basically if you haven't achieved some significant amount of power as a woman, like 35 is like that cutoff, like what I hear in Asia. It's like after 35, it's like, okay, pretty much. Yeah. Even for it. men, it's a little bit like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, ages, and the, yeah. The, the ageism, right? It's but crazy. like the, you were saying like the job postings and it's just like anyone over 35 don't apply. Yeah. Is that true? True. Mm. Very true. And a lot of people after 35, they got, you know, fired from the company or, you know, got sacked from the company. They, they just can't find a job. It's hard for them to find a job after you're 35. And for women, it's even harder. And especially women have to go to, you know, w once they have their babies and it's yeah. hard for them to return to the job. Right now, it's uh, it's an issue. A lot of people discuss it online, on social media. A lot of people discuss I remember on Weibo, there was one time I I was like discussing it with my followers. I was like, I was saying like uh, this job uh, market for women, like how, what do you guys, have you guys experienced? So I got like, just people are like, yes, I'm going to talk about this. 600 comments just talking about mm. this. Just like the unfairness that happened to them. And there's a lot of men coming to my comments say like, my wife experienced this mm. and this and mm -hmm. this constantly. So it's not, in that sense, it's not really protect. Like women's rights not really that protect. It's pretty bad here. It's, wow. it's really pretty yeah. bad here. Yeah, I, think, I mean, it might be better than other Asian countries, but it's pretty fucking bad. Yeah. Here. I would yeah. say... It's like obviously bad. I think there's spots in the world that are probably like much better examples, but I think on the whole, globally it's it's an issue. Yeah. Yeah. I remember a few years ago I was just because as I said, like everybody lived in their bubbles, you know. I was like, Yeah, I feel like my in my world every woman's so independent and they they, they got what they deserved. But then after I became I have a lot of followers and I start to hear them out. And I'm like, holy shit, there's so many things I don't, I have no idea like what people are living with, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, you know, what, what you just said, it actually brought uh, brought me back to how when I was, because I haven't been doing hiring processes in a long time, mm. but this, that kind of brought me back into like some people, especially uh, uh, local HR, they want to know if you've had kids or if you're planning to have kids mm -hmm. and i remember having a conversation once with uh, a previous company with my hr and i was like why do you want to know that why is that such a big deal like mm -hmm. i don't understand well, well, why and she's like well you know they a lot of, a lot of them take advantage you know they, they 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 try to secure the job and then they have kids and they're out so it's like we're we're we're, we're hooked in and there's yeah. nothing we can do so that's why we have to we have to ask we have to know there's too many people that take advantage of that yeah so I thought about that. I was like, okay, but it's still such a weird thing to ask. It's just yeah. right. Like, what are you supposed to say? And some people, like, yeah, they lie. They, 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 they tell you that they, they don't plan on it, and all of a sudden it's like by mistake. Yeah. It's but it's just weird that type of conversation, right? Because it's not so black and white. It's not like I'm I'm asking you this question because I don't want 
you to get pregnant. Yeah. But it's from a from a corporate perspective, it's, it's like they're trying to It's all about money. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's, it's all about, about money and cost. Exactly. Like they don't care. It's it's like it costs if it costs me more to hire you because you're going to be pregnant soon. Yeah. Right? And I can't get the value in return for you. Like they treat everyone like a commodity. Yeah. yeah. So if I can't get the value for it, then I'm not going to hire you, right? Yeah. And so the the a company I used to work for asked that question. They asked it very directly. There was no playing around. And I, I sat in on many of the uh, interview pr- processes, and I was even part of the interview process myself. And they asked that question all the time. It was like standard protocol to ask it. But when you look at the company itself, literally, I would say 90%, I'm not exaggerating, 90% or above of the company was all women, like mm-hmm. the people that actually worked in that company. Yeah. It was heavily, heavily, like 90% women. And obviously, that's just one company. And I'm not saying that that represents on the whole at all. But I'm saying there is a difference between the discussion of it versus the actual practice of it. And my feeling is, I think in the West, let's say take United States, there's definitely the discussion around women's rights. It's more mature there. It's more outspoken there. It's more front and center there. And for sure, HR, there's a lot of lines you cannot cross. Like if you ask if a woman's pregnant, you cannot ask that. You'll be sued for sure. So there's that. But then there's the actual practice and what you see in reality. And I don't know. My feeling is from my friends who live in the States, who worked in the States from my own experience there versus here working on both sides. I feel like the the disparity in terms of the whole woman representation in the workforce whether it's the pay wage, whether it's representation, whether it's the standards and criteria you need to meet being higher for women. I feel like that exists in both places, regardless of the openness of the discussion around it. And and, and I think that's the real problem, right? We can talk about it all day. We can pay lip service to these ideas and concepts all day, but if we don't actually, if society itself doesn't change, where it doesn't, it's meaningless. Yeah. It's also hard because the the woman has to give the give birth to the baby. Then that's I think that's one of the hardest problem. Like it yeah. can be solved. I, I mean, a lot of European countries they gave like same amount of maternity leave for both the husband and wife. Then it seems like it's more equal. Mm. You know, I think that could be a solution because um, here sometimes you see women complaining about this, and people will say, "Oh, like." The man will say, what are you guys complaining about? But then when women start to say, hey, let's give the same amount of maternity leave to men, then those men start to shout. They start to be, you know, they're online. They're like, no, we don't want this because how are we going to go back to the job and still have the same, keep my same position, you know? Like, So then they realize, wow, this is what women, exactly what women's been go- going through, you know? So when it happens to you, then you realize it's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I think the idea of, especially when you're talking about giving birth, it's, it's much harder for women on, in general to keep a career yeah. and to keep that career trajectory. Yeah. It's um, hard. Versus a man for sure. Not yeah. everybody can have a nanny, you know, like in Shanghai, we see a lot of people like they, they can afford a nanny. Yeah. But I, most people. Can. I had this friend in the States. She's a, she's a woman. She's Korean. Um, she's a lawyer. And so she was on track to be make partner in her firm. And I remember her having this real tough decision whether or not to have a baby or to make partner. It was like one or the other. Like yeah. you can't do both. Yeah. Like you just can't. Exactly. You know? So yeah. That's yeah. that's that's so tough. And that's a decision like men don't have to make. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. I it's just that, one of those really complicated issues, right? It is. Because very. it's not so black and white. It's not. Yeah. There is a cost to the companies. You know, the company doesn't want to, especially smaller companies, especially they don't want to pay for that kind of price. But yeah, I seriously don't know how to solve it. But there's obviously countries having more successful routes. I don't know. Yeah, no. for sure. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming, Don. <laughs> <laughs> we got so we, got got, so <laughs> we solved the problem, though. <laughs> like the very opposite thing from comedy. We just talked about. Yeah, no, no, that's good to talk well, about. I think. But that's an yeah. issue yeah, that's very, important to her. So yeah, I think it seems like it's, yeah, it's like you're yeah, very yeah. passionate about it. Yeah, I mean, like how you're a producer, you're, you're a director, right? I'm also a filmmaker. I'm also a director. So um, even even as a female director, yeah, I would love to hear your perspective. I don't, I don't. You can tell you don't get respected. Interesting. Sometimes I would bring my crew member or whatever to go to a meeting. 
then they haven't met us. They will automatically speak to my male crew member, mm -hmm. assuming they are the one who's in charge. They are the directors. What do they do when they find out the you're the director? Do they There's kind of some some are shocked or yeah, it's just and sometimes even they don't listen to you because you're just you're a woman director. They're just don't, interesting. Yeah, but when you're on set, I love when I go on set. Then people like all the crew members, they just they work hard and they they don't care. They just want to get a job done. You know, like I think part of this is just important is that there's probably still so many women and people who support women that are just trying to convince people that this is an issue. And I think that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. You know, that like this shit's like happening and there's millions of, there's just so many people that are kind of, including myself probably to some extent that's just ignorant. Like you're still at the process of trying to convince people that this is like a fucking problem. Yeah, like that's yeah, really yeah. fucked. Yeah. That's like super duper fucked, you know? Yeah. And I, th and I, th I think that, I think you can say that about so many yeah. important topics, yeah. right? <laughs> but this one in particular, yeah. I just think that the fact that we still question it yeah. means that, and I don't think that like, we should feel guilt for it because like I'll ask my wife a lot of stuff just to double check myself, you know, and it's just like staying curious. But then I'll find that like some of my perspectives are probably not very up to date and it'll be quite shocking. But I just find it, I don't know if that's a challenge and opportunity that yeah. there's just such lack of awareness. Maybe it's an opportunity. Maybe it's like if we can just get the word out, if we don't have to get to a point where we have to prove these things, then everything will be a lot like easier. Yeah, it's, it's not until some other authority or body or union can come in and be like, this is the way it is. If you don't participate, then you're out in terms of changing this type of mentality. Because, for example, if one company just stands out like, we're the good guys, you know, we do this, unless they are just so dominant in the industry that everybody has to follow because all the good people are going to that company because market declares, yeah, I, I have to do that then yeah, I guess that works. But otherwise, you need some other big body, government, union, establishing a law or something that everybody that's has to follow. That's I mean, what else are you going to do? No, no, I mean, that's part of it. Honestly, I mean, what else are you going to do then? That's part of it. It's, there's like, it's just like sustainability when we talked about last week, right? It has to happen at all levels. Like, there's no, it's like, like no government can be like, okay, here's the policy. Well, going with that sustainability conversation, I, I mean, I honestly think, and maybe I'm more skeptic, skeptical about it or pessimistic about it, I just feel like until anything, and this goes on goes with any movement we want to change. Like until it starts making financial sense in this world, you're not going to see a lot of change. And the whole kind of sustainability thing, which was cool about Give her that, the background on that. Well, we were talking. We had our previous guests. We're talking about sustainability, being eco friendly, and how corporations have to kind of change the way they do things and how they purchase and source and produce. Blah blah blah. Right? Recycle. And the cool thing about that conversation is that it's actually getting to a point where sustainability actually will be the most cost efficient and financially lucrative model to go. We're not fully there yet, but it's heading into that direction. Whereas before it was just a buzz term, right? Like we want to be sustainable, but it was it's actually like more thinking. Yeah, slogan, but it was actually more yeah. expensive to be that. Sure. Now situa now like technology and innovation and the way the world has shifted, it's and the way the market sentiment is towards these things, it's actually like very beneficial financially for companies to to hold this position. So that's an interesting thing. So until like the market shift where it's in the best financial interest, you're just not going to see a lot of change. Like, I don't agree with that, but that, I think that's just the reality of the world we live in. I would say if something is long-term, it will never be financially sustainable, then that, that movement probably cannot happen. But I wouldn't say it the other way, like, oh, it has to be financially, you know, and that's the only way it can happen. I would just say that's like one condition long-term, but there are so many different factors, right? Like they were talking about like in Shanghai, even without the Sulaji Ganlaji system, like Shanghai had one of the most self sustainable circular, like, economy. circular economy just because there would be people that made it work. Like people would pick up the televisions and this and that, and they would, you know. So I think well, it has to. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> like, <laughs> Bing Xia. Xi Ji. Xi He actually said that most, most of that actually goes to a secondhand market where people actually buy it. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Like the electronics, yeah. but everything else yeah. doesn't even leave yeah. the city limits. Yeah. It gets recycled yeah. within a matter of days and it's like a new box. Yeah. It's a new, some sort of new packaging or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. So like whether it's like, like 
I think, first of all, we just have to recognize that in all these areas, there has been significant progress, so we can't lose hope. Like, I mean, like, would you want to live 100 years ago? Like, none of us, none of us, first of all, would want to live 100 years ago, right? For sure. So I think there's been significant progress. And then I think it just has to happen at every level. The, the fabric of society, the, you know, the economics of it, the supply chain, you know, all of these things for sustainability, they all have to kind of sort of move. And so one piece moves forward and it kind of creates some, you know, a, a halo effect for something else. And then slowly things sort of change, right? But it really just like everyone has to ultimately get on board with it, mm. you know? Well, that's the issue. Everybody has to get on board of, with of it. over time. Because when go, going back to what we're talking about here, which is the male and female equality, um, especially in the workforce, it's about everybody being on board. It's 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 this perfect analogy that I used to always have as a filmmaker. Whenever I I'm on set and I had a female DOP, a female gaffer, producers, you know. It, I've had them like they run the gamut, and I think especially in China, uh, I've met a lot more female production people, not non clean producers, uh, but production people here than when I was back in the states. Really? Yeah. Um, not now. I'm sure mm -hmm. now it's different, but yeah. at least back then, um, it was always uh, guys that I've worked with, uh, DOPs, gaffers, yeah. you know, art. You, Art may be some a little bit different, yeah, right? Yeah. But um, yeah, so anyway, so here I noticed that there was a lot more uh, female, I wouldn't say a lot more. There were female DOPs, female uh, editors, female uh, uh, other other key creatives. Mm. And even Faye was on the show, remember? Like you know, we worked with together, I worked with together. She shared some stories that she felt something like what you said, where it was like, hello, I'm the DOP, like, Yep. Talk to me with that way, please. Not exactly. I'm not some assistant or yeah. whatever. And what she said kind of resonated, which was it's only it's not because that person was negative towards me being a female. It was just that he wasn't exposed to it. So to yeah. him, it wasn't like it didn't connect. Yeah. But once after she showed her ability yeah. and also like worked together, I, all of a sudden the guy's like. Yeah. You're the shit. Yeah. And then it was all good. That happens to me so, all the So time. that's the thing yeah. about, it's about hu like the human nature, the, the, the exposure, right? Once you get exposed and you, and you kind of get used to, just like if you've never had Western food, you're like, ooh, I don't like Western food. But then you eat it, you're like, yeah. it's not bad. And you eat it a couple more times. Oh, okay, I like it. It's the same idea. You, you'll never really know or really buy into anything until you get exposed to it, until it gets normalized. And just like what Eric is saying, yes, that normalization, it takes a lot of different moving parts to make it normalize. But what I was coming from is like, you kind of need that strong arm to make it go forward a little bit quicker or a little bit easier. Yeah. I think the problem is we don't have enough female leaders in every industry. It's mm. not enough. I mean, there is, you can see there's more and more, but it's definitely not enough. So the decision makers, they're still men. And as you said, like the men, that the, they're not exposed to what these girls are going through. So they don't know what these girls are going through. So they just automatically assume, oh, this is the way we should do things. But yeah, like it's, it's a funny analogy. I always uh, say um, sometimes men cannot get it. But once you compare it to race, for example, I'll make an example. Uh, there's one time, I don't know if you guys know that news. Uh, so it's like a dragon, dragon boat in Guangzhou, then some women sat on it. Then everybody's like internet bullying her and everything saying that women should not sit on the dragon boat. Mm -hmm. And the guy who owns the dragon boat said, you can't sit on the dragon boat because you're a woman. And now my dragon boat's fucked. You need to pay or whatever. So it's like that, that's like a big mm -hmm. thing. Like it's a tradition that women mm -hmm. are not allowed to sit in the dragon boat. But then all the all the women are obviously online. They're all angry, right? It's like, what what are you talking about? Then then all the men, a, a lot of men don't get it. They're like, yeah, it's a tradition. It's a tradition. But then if you replace that with racial, so if you say Chinese people are not allowed to sit on this American boat, yeah, or this white people's boat, whatever, the Chinese man will obviously be You're very like, very up? yeah. They're yeah. what the fuck? This racist, you know. But somehow it happened to women. It's not sexist. It's the double standard there. Yeah. So if it's a, if it's a racial thing, then it's not okay. But for somehow for some reason, if it's a women thing, it's okay. So mm. that's I think people cannot stand in women's shoes. That's like one of the biggest problem. And also, you know, the decision makers are not 
uh, not women. So yeah, they they also they cannot stand in women's shoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about in the comedy scene? Is is that I'm assuming is that like a a breath of fresh air in terms of maybe there's more equality there? I'm guessing. I don't know.、Um, or do you kind of see the same dynamics playing out in the comedy scene? Yeah, like in China,、uh, as we said, like in China, the, the the comedy scene is very equal. I think it's very equal. Like women don't feel very struggling in this industry at all because you can, you, as you said, you know, all the female comedians are very very successful, and、uh, you can see a lot of audiences like are, are female. They come to sometimes they come to see me. That it comes because you're a woman, and I love your jokes. You have jokes about women's point of views.、Mm. I love that. So you can see it's like very different market from the Western comedy world. Like when you go to the Western comedy, like even this time I went to Ireland, you can see there's barely I I couldn't see like a woman comedian in that club. You know, it's just different. Like that night we have like four, four male、uh, comics and one female comic. That's it. So you can still see it's so male、no、dominated. <laughs> yeah. So that was. Yeah, I think yeah. there's something to the idea of starting from zero,、mm. because you don't have tradition at play. You don't have any preconceived notions, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because it's fresh here, stand-up comedy. It's not a thing. Maybe some people were exposed to it here and there, but it's for mass public. It was not a thing until it became a thing. Yeah, and when it became a thing, because it was equal footing for both male and female in the way that the Be sad, right? It's a competition, and you had males and females competing against each other. It was equal. It was not anything like, oh yeah, I have a history of male comedians, stand up comedians.、Yeah, you know,、exactly. there was none of that history. No,、yeah. so history is getting made now,、yeah. and that's like the dragon boat thing, right? Because it's always been male.、So、yeah, the that, tradition. I mean, so whenever、something. you、yeah. have like a legacy, then it's harder to change. Yeah, but yeah. like that makes sense too.、Yeah. It does. But maybe even the, the market might even be different. Like I think what you were、the、saying, Don. Yeah. And this is a total ignorant assumption I'm making. Okay, I'm gonna preface that. But my feeling in terms of being back in the states,、um, the people I know that are like really into stand-up comedy and the comics are all guys. Yeah,、exactly. they're all guys. Yeah, like yeah. I know very few women. If I name this, unless they're like a Dave Chappelle or something, they might know them. But like if I name some like someone like Shane Gillis or something that or、yeah. Theo Vaughn, they'll be like, "Who is that?"、Yeah. Like they wouldn't. They wouldn't know.、Yeah. They're not interested. And but here it seems like the audience and the market here is heavily women in terms、yeah. of their interest and. But, but how、comedy. big is the market here too?、Mm. It's、right? a new market. The Chinese market is big, but, but it's new. The English comedy, yeah, it's very new. That's、uh, that's the thing. So the audience is they for the the first thing they learned about comedy is hey I seen this comedy first comedy I show I seen is like a lot of women comedians so they're like this is comedy the first impression made on them. But in West, it's different. Also, it's, it's yeah, the market thing. It's it's like sports,、mm, right?、Yeah. It's kind of like sports. I can see now it's a little bit、uh, different in the West. Even there are more and more female comedians. But also, you can see the audiences are you know. For example, the comments I, I mentioned earlier said, "Oh, women are not funny." I think they're not not funny. It's just what they said didn't resonate with you. That's probably one of the biggest. Yeah, yeah, it's not what they're used to, which so, is fine. Yeah, so when yeah. this woman said on stage, said these amount of jokes, and these women laughed really hard,、yeah. but man's like, what is she talking about?、Yeah. I don't get、yeah. it. And you take、yeah. like maybe like someone like Bill Burr, maybe a lot of women won't find him funny because they don't relate in the same way. That's、exactly. like I don't. That's not. You、exactly. know that doesn't relate to me. Yeah. yeah. Are there any、um, Are there any standups in the West female that you? Like really look up to that you think is like doing really well. Um, obviously Ali Wong's doing very well. That was great. Um, who else? I'm just been thinking. Yeah, oh, like, Michelle Wilson. Wolf is definitely my favorite.、Oh, Michelle、okay. Wolf. Yeah, yeah, she's my favorite. Michelle、sure. Wolf. Yeah. Have you seen her、mm -hmm. stuff? No, no, I gotta check、uh, it out. Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes. Wanda, Wanda Sykes, Sykes is funny. She, he, <laughs> she is、so、crazy. Funny. She's funny. <laughs> But when you mentioned、yeah. Joan Rivers earlier, I see a little、yeah. bit of Joan Rivers the, the, the way you perform when you do、oh, really? skits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know why it's like I, it's a little it satirical, right? Yeah, little satire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because、yeah, yeah. Joan Rivers is is she's bitey. Yeah. You know she's she's vicious. You know. Yeah, that's one、way. thing I, I find myself sometimes struggling here. Sometimes you go to the West, they want want a female comedian to be more 
you know, what you said, like it's more, I'm more edgy, I'm more like feisty or something like that. Present that kind of like more stronger t- character. But here, like if a woman, if I go on stage, then I say some jokes and I'm like doing like an angry kind of bit and they mm. got really scared. Mm. Mm-hmm. But what if you just keep doing it until they get used I to I want it, to do that. Right? But you can see it's, it's actually a world problem too. Like you don't see female billboards, like ranting. Ranting for Roseanne Barr. Yeah, ranting, but that was so long ago. And yeah. also, she's she's quite different too. Yeah. So you, you see, most women can't be billboard, like they can't rant. Because of, I think a lot of it is that double standard. If there was a female version of Bill Burr, they she'd be like heavily criticized. She'd be called. She'd be a bitch. whining. Yeah, they, yeah, they would just call bitch. her a bitch. Like, you're oh my a bitch. God. Yeah, and yeah. it's not, not even pleasant whining. to watch. Not even yeah. whining, like yeah. aggressive. Because like. You yeah, can apply aggressive. this same sort of thing to leadership, which is mm. when a man is like angry or aggressive That's or whatever power. it is, they're, yeah. they're powerful, they're showing leadership. And when, when a woman does it, then it's like, you know, all think yeah. of all the negative pejorative things. And so there's a lot of like unconscious bias and yeah. like a framing effect. Even in a, just like a family hold. Like sometimes you see like the dad, if the dad's being angry, it is authority. Then it somehow is really useful. But the mom's getting angry, she's just hysterical. It's kind of like that in a lot of people's mm-hmm. ho- households Except too, for right? mine. <laughs> well, uh, your mom's definitely the mom. alpha. My mom's like like alpha. the respected alpha. alpha. <laughs> You're starting to see it now. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance he gets. That's interesting. What about um, coming up as a comic though? Because, you know, I... I I watch a lot of comedians podcasts and I get to understand a little bit into their world. And one thing they always like to talk about is like the times where they bombed. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like a rite of passage for stand up comedians. Yeah. Um, what have your bombing experience, because they say every comedian bombs, right? It's yeah. just a rite of passage for oh, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what have your experiences been like and how does the audience react to bombing uh, when you have like a really bad set here in China? It's, um, it's still, it's very different. Like, because for example, the same set I, I I've done in Ireland, and I come here to do the same set in China in China in front of Chinese audiences. I would definitely bomb. Like now, I learned that. Mm. But at the beginning, I didn't. At the beginning, I still do this very Western international set. And then I I would be like bombing a lot in front of Chinese audiences. I'm like, holy shit! Like they they. So it's really you feel really personal. Obviously, at the beginning, you're like. Like they are just, you in that moment? They just hate me. <laughs> just yeah, you're in the like moment. Like, me. what the fuck? But what yeah. is bombing like? Are they just really quiet? They don't laugh. Yeah. Or do they heckle? Do, they, do people heckle? No, here in China? no, no. People no don't heckle. Yeah, that's not that's a thing a, here, right? It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Like they might, when you do a crowd work to them, they might talk way too much, mm. like giving you information that you don't need at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, TMI, too much. Too much. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of like yeah, but but bombing here, it's more like everybody's quiet. They're very quiet. And the the most, it's like they don't get your joke. That's, They're just staring at you. like Yeah, and they don't get it. That's like the worst. <laughs> I can imagine. Oh. Like, I can see a lot of comedians here, like especially the Western comedians. And they perform in front of a bunch of Chinese audience and they bomb hard. And they did not, you can see they're panicking on stage. <laughs> I remember Dylan, I don't know if you know Dylan Moran. No. Uh, he's like this Irish uh, comic He's like really big. He he used to have this big uh this TV show called Black Book. Yeah, he's very big in in Europe, uh in even in America. But then he came one time. He came to China because of the show he did. A lot of Chinese people actually watched it, so they know who he is. They love him. But then he came here to do stand up. He bombed so. I was there. <laughs> he bombed so hard the first half, so hard that I can see him just panicking. Like sweat stage. started yeah. coming. Out. He was panicking, just thinking, "What's wrong with my jokes? This should work." You know, <laughs> it's obviously the language barrier. There's like the jokes doesn't translate and all that. Then the second half, I I, I don't know what he adjusted. Then he adjusted the speed of his wording and he just like he just went back to his old jokes and all that then people start to laugh yeah oh it's really weird yeah. oh. and the same Irish club I did in, in Ireland in Dublin I heard also Dylan Moran went to that club and he bombed so hard there too yeah so it's very very different and sometimes you think you're bombing but actually the audiences are they're listening 
They're mm. enjoying it. <laughs> they're, they're learning. It's so weird. Also, <laughs> Chinese people sometimes they don't laugh out loud. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. They kind of laugh inside. They don't express. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Emote. Yes. Yeah. Then after the show, they came to you and say, "Oh, I fucking loved your show." I'm like, "Did you?" <laughs> yeah. It's like <laughs> you could have fooled of, me. Yeah. You could have told me with your face. You know. <laughs> yeah. That is so, true. Yeah. So that was so sometimes. So at the beginning, every bombing I took is so personally. I it's got to crush you. I can't imagine. Yeah. Like, I can't. I could never do something. I will be breaking for like two weeks or, you know, oh. a few weeks. I've been uh, just thinking about it. But then later on, as more you do comedy, you're like, I'm not bombing at all. <laughs> I'm not bombing. I'm just, it's just, you can't find the reasons. Do you, do you, do you find that the audiences here tend to like crowd work or? They love crowd work. They love crowd work. Yeah, I would think they so. They love think crowd they work. They would love that engagement, right? And it's mostly nowadays people learn stand-up comedy through social media. They watch stand-up comedy clips. Then every comedian posts crowd work because they don't want to expose their jokes. They want to save their jokes for selling tickets. Oh, what's sure. crowd? What is it? When they interact with the crowd. When, you like, oh. when yeah. you're just riffing and you're freestyling and yeah, going you're back talking and forth to with the, the crowd. crowd. Yeah. Interesting. I thought the perspective was because you're showing off your skills, like how fast you are because you have to be fast. Yeah. If you're not fast, your crowd work's going to suck. Yeah. And you can bomb doing crowd work. Exactly. Right? So that actually shows your intelligence that shows how fast you oh, are. Oh, for sure. It's yeah. like freestyle rapping. Like, yeah. How, like, how do you like... It's so impressive. I, feel, I, I, I saw your crowd work. I think it's really good. Oh, it's really funny. Oh, thanks. I, I don't think I'm very good at crowd work because I, 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 I do more jokes. But then sometimes you will watch like some really popular comedians in China. They only do crowd work. Then you go to their their shows. Then you realize like the their, their are like, jokes eh. are so shit. They are only good at crowd work. They're just uh, good at riffing on people. Yeah. Then you see the best comedians who does crowd work, uh, who does jokes. And just, just doesn't do crowd work. Uh, you need to be really comfortable on stage to do crowd work like that. And also, if you if you watch enough. Uh, offline shows, you will find out a lot of comedians, their crowd works are not, <laughs> they, they are planned. A lot of them are planned. Oh, they or, have a plan or, in the audience? Or they be, no, no, no. It's oh. not the audience. The jokes are already planned. Oh. So no matter what you, what oh, the audience is going to gonna respond, audience. I already have a response. Mm -hmm. oh. So that's what most comedians oh, that's do. Lame. Oh. Actually. No, but that's, you, when you watch it, you can't tell mm -hmm. at all. Oh. That's kind of like what magicians do too when they like work with the crowd. Yeah. Like they already yeah, know. Yeah. They have the setup and they just yeah. like, you know, yeah. they pick people who you, fall in line. You guys should have seen my crowd work with... with um. Oh, did you do a little, little riffing? Like uh, like the whole time. I was Where? Just, Where was this? Uh, at Crossroads. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, let's doing... not make this all about you, Eric. Uh, <laughs> you should have seen Again. my crowd work though. You should have seen my <laughs> crowd work. It was, it was solid. Like, the uh, no, but like um, because what I've seen of you, you seem Don, you seem so natural on yeah, stage. Yeah, very. Like you seem really, really yeah. comfortable on stage. And were you always like that? Because the fear of like public speaking is like such a huge fear. It's like yeah. I think it's like the number one phobia like in the world. Yeah. Did is that something you had to get over, or were you just naturally always like not afraid of being on stage and talking in front of people? I always no, I always kind of loved performing in front of people since I was a kid. Mm. But like in terms of like going on stage and do jokes, that's completely different. Yeah. Right? So you go on stage and 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 you constantly fear that your punchline won't work. Like they won't laugh at your punchline. Like I know I, I'm I'm super insecure. I know a lot of comedians are very comfortable on stage. They're way more comfortable than me. And I'm not, I'm actually, yeah. I presented that I'm very comfortable, mm. but I'm actually not. And it's especially, I'm a, I'm more, I'm actually introverted person. Yeah, so I heard you say that. That's really hard on stage too, especially doing crowd work, right? When yeah. you're not good with people, when you're not good in a mm. conversation, meeting that's, strangers. So, it's well, crazy so you, you say that. Yeah. What do you tell yourself like when you have that constant sort of anxiety like, like, have you gotten better over better, like, over time? Like, is, sure. are there mantras? Like, what do For you do sure. before? A sh what's your routine before a show? I don't have a routine. You I don't just have a throw routine. yourself in. You drink yeah. coffee, alcohol, and tea. <laughs> no, <laughs> no just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but the um, yeah, I remember used to. I used to be quite nervous on stage, but most of the times I remember just like as soon as you grab the microphone, then you start to talk, then. They're sort of just Something gone. clicks, right? Unless you bombed in one joke. That one punchline didn't work. Then you're, it's kind of messed up with your head up mm. there already. Because you keep thinking about it. Yeah, you just like, why? why? Yeah. Then you just start to think, what's wrong with that joke? 
then you kind of lose concentration a little bit. And you then lose. You, I bet you lose confidence on all your next jokes you too. You lose right? confidence. You can feel. Sometimes you can feel the the tone of your voice, the vibe when you're speaking is like different. <laughs> so the audience, the audiences are like predators. They're down there. They're like they can smell blood. You know, yeah. <laughs> they're down there. They can they can catch tiny bit of your insecureness. Yeah. They can see it. Yeah. So once once yeah, you expose yourself. They yeah. are well. Yeah. There and and I mean, it's so funny that you say like predator, right? Because that's how it feels to you. And from their perspective, they're it's like they're actually just innocent people, but they feed off your energy. Yeah, and because they feed off your energy, anytime they sense the dip. Essentially, like the show is just about raising their level of energy, yeah,、right? and their consciousness. So whenever they they're basically attuned to you because、mm-hmm. they're watching your every move, and that's what makes it so hard, right?、Yeah. And so that if you then do something where then you get in your own head, then they're going to then feel that. You know, it's like and they second-hand feel, embarrassment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then、like、you feel in crowd, it in your heart. Yeah, yeah. when、and、I'm in the、like, crowd, yeah, like, yes. like how can God? And someone's bombing, I will feel second-hand、yeah. embarrassment immediately.、Exactly. And I, like, I like really want them to do well, so I don't have to feel this embarrassment. <laughs>、right. You know where I? But feel the more、it? they bomb, the more second-hand yeah, embarrassment, yeah, yeah, and the more yeah, it's like it's、yeah. this vicious、that、cycle. Even one、yeah. second, I feel it usually here. Yeah, like I actually feel <laughs> yeah, it in my chest、audience. and stomach.、Yeah. I'm like Justin's、oh. like in the crowd, like Cho Cho Ni, be a bomb. Yeah, well, how can you? Yeah, it's bad. It's yeah. So yeah. you don't have a routine. No,、um, I and、But、then what at about- least at, wait, at least it's got to be better because people don't. It's a little bit better because there's no heckling here. I would imagine that if you had also to deal with like a culture that like heckles. That would just even more be like, oh my god, like more fear inducing to me. For、mean? me, heckling like sometimes I meet,、uh, I have audiences heckling. I would use it. I would I would try to use it because、mm. it's now it turns into because every audience know I'm not the asshole, <laughs> you know. So now it's your advantage.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, but when you're alone on stage bombing, then that's all on you. That's true. Yeah, it seems like silence is like would be the worst. Yeah. Like of anything, it's like you know you're <laughs>、yeah. like if you're like if you said something and you kind of pissed off your friend or your wife or 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 your you know your parents or something. Like what I was most scared about it was just like no reaction was like the scariest. If they actually had a reaction, you could do something about it. It's like、mm. the no reaction, then you're just you're like、control. you don't know where to go. I'm on the fence on that. Yeah, I'm on the fence on that. Oh really? But what but what's the culture here in terms of within the comedian community? Is there like let's say for example. I wanted to go into stand-up comedy. He's getting to where he's really trying to. What he's really, really trying no, to say? Com- complete newbie. He wants、yeah. enter. Is there this like hierarchy and culture of like, oh, this is the new new guy getting into the scene? We're gonna haze him. We're gonna make him earn his dues. Like you have to like wash the dishes at the venue. Like whatever it is. Is there that type of culture here in terms of this、uh, this kind of fraternity or sorority of like comedians and and new people? I heard in the West this is a thing. Yeah, like when you're new, like it's 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 brutal. It, yeah, it's brutal. I, that's what I heard.、Um, but here, no, here is very support. Everybody's very supportive. Yeah, that's great. Very very supportive, especially the English scene. Yeah, when if you're new, like everybody try to make you feel good.、Mm. Wow. Like, so they make sure when before you go on stage, the host will tell the audience. Like this is your first time. Stand up comedy is really hard, and let's just give the best <laughs> to him. Yeah, like, that's so different because in、we'll、the states、sure. they'll just throw you to the wolves. You know,、yeah. like you, know, you you swim or you die. <laughs> yeah, but here like they give you a lot of encouragement and all that. So、um, yeah, that's I, awesome. I, which、here. I really appreciate the、yeah. scene, and also I think especially for English <laughs> because there's not a lot of financial interests and a lot of competition. That's why everybody's so supportive. Everybody's friends. Because you, because you know. if you're doing it, you're passionate about it. At the end of the、exactly. day, you enjoy doing so it. So the comedians are all very supportive. There's no like kind of little competitions, like in like a mean spirited way at all. You where people are trying to sabotage each other. In Chinese comedy scene, it could be a little bit different because there's so much more money、at、involved、stake. in competition. Clubs will be reporting each other、mm-hmm. to the government, like oh, this club. They said trying to、something. shut them down. Yeah, yeah just this shit happening all the time, which is really bad, you know, because、uh, mm. you're you're not only hurting yourself. Like in China, this means you're hurting the whole industry. If you report it on that club, it, the 
to the government's eyes, it's like, oh, it's not this club is the problem. It's stand-up comedy scene is the problem. Mm -hmm. Like it's uncontrollable. Yeah. You know, you just it's crazy. So I think that's really bad. But you know, I think this backstabbing in the entertainment industry just happens everywhere. You know, yeah, yeah. But here in Shanghai, I would say it's we really appreciate the scene. There you go, yeah. Justin. Let's. You should do yeah, it. Yeah, I think I think like yeah, come, come try. Uh, no, I'm joking. Yeah, he's not joking. He's serious. <laughs> yeah. He's I'm I'm totally joking. Look at him, he's I'm blushing. Like, you know, I never really planned a career path here as a comedian here in China. I, I, I like doing things on social media. I have a lot of followers watching my some like funny videos and sketches and stuff like that. But as a comedian, like I think just the script proving alone really threw me off. Mm. And I don't know, I enjoy, because uh, yes, doing this is for sure enjoyment comes first for me. Because I, I have another job, right? So I have my main job as a director and that pays my bills and everything. And I, I love that too. So which makes doing comedy even more a passion, even more something that I, I would love to enjoy. So I think I can, I can see myself because we have one English show. It's called Spicy Comedy. In, in Shanghai, that's the only English comedy in China. I think China or in Shanghai, that's, uh, that's licensed. That's a mm. legit licensed show. And I've been doing that a lot. And I noticed I just, at some point, I just really don't enjoy it. Especially mm. every time I have to submit the script, then they come with feedback of the script. And mm -hmm. they say, this joke. That's so weird. This joke, mm. you can't do that joke. You can't do that. It just really bombs you out sucks all the fun out of it yeah you're yeah. like i i because you feel like comedy i'm a comedian i should be more an artist than a money-making machine you know which a lot of comedians here i can uh, nothing wrong about that but a lot of comedians here they they use comedy as not only a passion also a money-making mm. thing which is which is great like i i feel i feel good for them uh they should you know they they deserve getting paid and make money but just playing that game along of like submitting the script it's too 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 much for me it's yeah too i much mean for me yeah i i see that from what you said earlier because like you know you made this comment like in china like you sometimes you don't grow up as this individual like you're representing all this stuff so like everything about your background and growing up in that small town but having family from other places and really st kind of sticking out and being different mm -hmm. like that's you so like going that now into this world where you're doing something you really love, but then you have to do it in a way that everyone wants you to do it. Like that goes against every sort of bone in your body. Yeah. And I also think it's like you get to a point of success. And I think everyone, like a lot of people will hit that wall because, you know, uh, any kind of entertainer or performer or artist or whatever, because then it becomes commercialized and there's money involved. And then there are people that want to control it. Once it gets big enough where other people, you know, have their own incentives and then, you know, whether you're like a director or you're you know, like a filmmaker, you know, you're making TV shows, you're always listening. So that censorship, although it's something that maybe there's certain aspects of it here, but I think anywhere you go, you're always going to have some type of censorship because it's like aligning the interests in a certain way. But I feel like it's so, it happens so soon here that it just probably takes all the joy out of it. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm cool with, like, I don't do politics on stage. I don't do, you know, like, any sensitive stuff on stage. But still, like, there, there's so many stupid, silly jokes, clean jokes that you can do, which is just, I just really hated it. Mm. You got to work a lot harder for those jokes. They're a lot harder to come by, right? Because it's got to fit in that particular parameter. You know what's funny? Like, a lot of comedians enjoy this. Mm -hmm. They enjoy the vetting. Really? I talk to a lot of comedians, they enjoy that because mm -hmm. they think, oh, it wouldn't it be fun to like bypass the rule, like to to like make mm. your joke, write your jokes actually. Right on the edge into, kind of thing. Uh, not oh. on the edge, but like, yeah, they're just saying, but it's like. Y yeah. So to but, them, but it's but like a game, what, what like you're well, trying to like. Yeah. Find, in, in the old Soviet Union, I don't know. If, <laughs> <laughs> but um, there were. The, I mean, it was like the same thing, right? Back in the day. And a lot of the classical composers, like they, I mean, they really had to follow, you know, like, because they were very, very like rock, like uh, Prokofiev was a very famous uh, Russian composer. And they would get off Shost Shostakovich. 
and they would get off on doing subversive pieces, mm. right? And like, well, and, it's like an art form yeah. all into and, and, and then itself. even till today, people are like, no, that person was like a puppet. And then other people are like, you don't even know that person was not a puppet. Like we know that person. Everything he did was subversive. It was like all a parody, and it was the ultimate joke because no one on the government level ever knew. Ever got it? Yeah, mm. but it was like. Like that, but I don't. I mean, you know. I but don't also, know. there's a lot of audience didn't get it. Is <laughs> right. the message you want to <laughs> right. send? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah we're talking about like classical music, so no one yeah. gets it. You know? You're like telling all these jokes, like, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no idea what you're saying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah. what's your outlook on the future of stand-up comedy uh, here in China? Are you are you hopeful about it? That it's gonna keep growing and keep getting better. I I would just be happy that it survives. <laughs> it survives here. Mm. Um, yeah, I I don't know about a better. I don't know if it's gonna go better because in my point of view, the better is really like in terms of an artist. If an artist can create an art, but now you can see comedy is very very commercialized here. It's very much commercialized here, and it's going to a point that it's like. What are you guys doing with comedy? Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. I, I almost ask myself whenever I I I don't watch those shows. Those those uh, what is it called again? The talkie show da hui. 对 talkie show da hui. I I've seen episodes and I see them here and there and, and I just feel like the the general public who don't know any better are getting led to believe that that is comedy. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. But then there's a lot of people argue say. But they let so many people know there is comedy. There's the thing called stand-up comedy, which is true in a lot of on a lot of level. Because before that, most people don't know what stand-up mm. comedy is. Mm, yeah. Then after that, you can see like offline clubs. There's a, so many clubs open mm -hmm. up. Then they're doing mm -hmm. stand-up comedy. But I, I I know exactly what you're talking about because you can see people online. They've never been to one single show offline. But they only watch online, watch that show, mm -hmm. and they think that's stand up comedy. Mm -hmm. And they use that as the barometer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the weird There's, thing. And that, that's so interesting because it's like different philosophies, right? Like, where like some people might be like, to your point, okay, we can get to a bigger audience. And then some people are more purists and say, well, you do that and you dil dilute the whole thing. So there's no point anymore. And there probably are different schools of thought. As well, I mean, there are probably people who are just commercial bastards, whatever, right? But there probably are different schools of thought on this. Right, as well. There's negatives and you know positives you might be able to take away. Yeah, right. I guess the argument on the other side is, to your point, Don, is most people will know that there is such a thing as stand-up comedy, whereas that term didn't even exist before. Yeah. And once they get maybe exposed to, oh, there is this thing called stand-up comedy. There are stand-up comedians. And if they really enjoy it, maybe they end up starting starting to do their own research, and they start finding other stand up com comedians abroad, yeah. like like how you did and how your influences were. Yeah. And they start seeing the Bill Burrs and the uh, and all the other and Michelle Wolfs and all the other comedians yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I remember at the beginning a lot of those uh, comedians from Togo Shodawa they follow my web or they watch what I translated. Then they look for inspirations and mm. stuff like that. But then after Toho Dashi went really, really famous and people start to learn that, oh, this is stand-up comedy. And they actually stopped watching Western mm -hmm. comedy. Yeah. Like you can talk to a lot of audiences here. They don't know who Louis C.K. is. They don't know who Bill Burr is. They don't know. Yeah. But in order to even find a lot of that stuff funny, I think you have to get the cultural references. Exactly. Because so much of it is rooted in like specific cultural references. Exactly. That yeah. if you didn't grow up in that culture, you wouldn't really know. Yeah. Or you weren't exposed to that culture, you wouldn't know. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I want to kind of dig in more is more about Chinese humor in general. Mm. Because I think there is a difference. And without being eloquent in kind of describing what that means, what is Chinese sense of humor, because I, I don't think I can do it, but I, I want to see if you can maybe. There is a difference. I always hear it from my coworkers or from other people I'm around that are local. They're like, oh, 美国幽默感, right? Mm, 美式幽默感, 美式幽默. And I'm like, what? Okay, sarcasm, I guess, is a big thing because I'm always sarcastic. Is that what that means? 幽默, sarcasm? No, 幽默 means humor. Okay. Right? 
And me, she's an American. But is American that what humor. it refers to? Is sarcasm? Well, I, I say it must be for my sarcasm because I'd always make sarcastic uh, jokes okay, about okay, things. Okay. And, and they'd be like, me, she's your mother, Lila, you know? And then, I, and then when watching, let's say, uh, Chinese films or Chinese TV shows, I feel like the humor is a lot more physical. So there's a lot of physical humor or play, playing on words. Yeah, playing on words. Right? So, sure. so, you, so it's almost like you're expecting the word, this character to mean this thing, but they play it around yeah. so that you're not expecting that meaning. Yeah. So those are the two things. It's, mo- it's mostly, uh, it's actually pretty intellectual because you have to yeah. be smart in it's terms of smart, breaking yeah. down characters and, yeah. and how they do the word play, whether it's delivering it quickly and then, blah, 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 you know, yeah. miscommunication. Yeah. Or physical humor, which is more like Lauren Hardy kind of, right? Old school Three Stooges. Three stars, I was going to say. <laughs> you know, so it's like, oh, I fell. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. What's your take on this? It's really funny when you talk about, uh, you know, satire. Because um, I, I really, Chinese people don't get uh, sarcastic jokes yeah. at all. Yeah. No, like never. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, well, that's something we you used to talk about even before we ever did the podcast was yeah. like we come in with our US sarcasm and it would people would take us seriously. Seriously, yeah. yeah, yeah. They and, took it literally. And then you're like, oh fuck. They took yeah, me seriously. Yeah. And then you look like a fool. Yeah. Yeah. So you're be like for for example, you, you would say uh something like Oh, like oh, you aren't you smart? And they're like, yes, thank you, right? It's like that kind of thing, right? It's like constantly. So I remember, um, I have a really good friend, Peng Dang. He's uh, he does comedy in Comedy Cellar. Oh, yeah, he's a regular Comedy Cellar, so he's really good. And he came to Spicy Comedy. Then he did like a few shows. And he just couldn't get his head wrapped around why people don't get. He's subtle and, you know, <laughs> sarcastic jokes. I'm like, ah. Oh. And then he's Chinese, you know, so. But is he using Chinese or is he using uh, So, yeah, it's really, really. Yeah, I think but, in, in, in China, even in Chinese humor, we probably have, yeah, we have sarcasm in Chinese humor. What is yeah. the Chinese word for sarcasm? Feng ci. Feng ci. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have sarcasm, but when you translate to English, somehow it just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Mm. But Chinese humor in general, it's very different. Even you can see like regionally, like the Southern and the Northern humor is so different, right? Well, here's a timely one. What about, because every year during Chinese New Year, on national broadcast TV here, they have this like the whole celebration Chun-wan. thing, right? Chun-wan. Yeah, and Chun-wan. and then they have like that comedy skit. Yeah, what's that, that called? That it's a name for this. Xiaoping. What's it? When they do like a, it's almost like stand up, it's like performance. Oh, it's, 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 it's a whole play. Oh, yeah, yeah, Xiangsen. Xiangsen. Yeah, so I, I, I watch that because it's always on in the background somewhere when we're having dinner during Chinese yeah. New Year. Um, like, what is that type of comedy? Is that is that comedy that most Chinese people really relate to? Like, what do you think of that type of comedy? Uh, I think recent years, people have more critics to Chun Wan's comedy. What, than, what type of criticism? Like, it's not funny anymore. Mm. It's too, yeah, like, it is not funny anymore. Because you can watch, like, the ones we grew up watching. Like, Chun Wan is our first entertainment to watch. It's like, mm. wow, the best thing. Like, the comedy are so funny. Like, <laughs> you know those Dongbei guys like Zhao Benshan? Mm-hmm. Do you know him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the best, right? Like, they have this smart, clever satire. And the skits are ha- very funny. Very yeah. good yeah. skits. And yeah. the xiangsheng, sometimes the xiangsheng is really, really good. But nowadays, you can see it's just so... Uh, we don't even know why. It's just not good anymore. Yeah. I think a lot of them, it's obviously the vetting, mm. for sure. Yeah, because you can see back then you can still talk about a lot, a lot more topics. The the range is way bigger; it's way broader. You can see the sketch can do; they can do like sarcastic things on certain, or more sexual innuendos. Things. You know, not yeah, a little bit of that, but mostly like sometimes they even talk about like corrupted officials or whatever, like in the skits in Chunwa. Wow! Now you can never see wow. those things. You can't. Wow, they used to have those kind of jokes too. Oh Back yeah! Wow. Oh yeah, a lot, a lot. They would be making fun of those people and all that. Yeah, mm. but now you just don't see anymore. And also, I think people's tolerance of comedy, their tolerance of um, jokes, are like what I said. You know, they are so used to cleaner and more and more vetted 
content so they can't see anything that's that's not even edgy mm-hmm. yeah you because know? life isn't like that right yeah life is not so vetted that reminds <laughs> that's that's so similar to what i hear uh american comedians talking about doing um campus gigs so when they refer to campus gigs they mean going to universities mm. like for, across the board consistently what i hear from these top comedians is like they don't do any university gigs anymore because that's mm. like they say that's the worst crowd to perform in front of because it they you can't do anything edgy in that crowd anymore they get offended yeah yeah you can't do like anything remotely and then even they have to even submit some stuff and the you know the the universities have to approve of their of their of their of their whole th- routine sometimes but yeah they and it just reminds me of what you're saying is like this idea of people want it polished and clean and within the lines don't go trying to push the boundaries and be edgy yeah. and i think echoing your sentiment a lot is like that is what stand up comedy is all about like i mean that is very what like a lot of humor and comedy is founded on like if yeah. you go back in the day in the early like medieval times with jesters The jesters were there was to poke fun of and roast people like that was the funny thing. Yeah. And they were to they even make fun of the king, you know, that that was like their thing. Yeah, it's it's like that's like the very heart of comedy and if it gets too washed down, it does lose it loses that spirit. Yeah, how how sure. do they do roasting here? We do roast shows. We do roast shows. But um, unlicensed. <laughs> we do the underground. Well, you roast like specific people or you just like roast generally like go around uh, the crowd roasting people? No, we do like roast roast, like comedians roasting each other. Oh. Yeah, so we do like, uh, for example, on my birthday, I did a birthday roast on me. Like, so I got like a few comedians come Ooh, to roast me. Like, yeah, that's fun. <laughs> oh, roaster did it hurt? I love roasting. Yeah, Com- I, the Comedy Central roast were so funny, legendary. Funny. Yeah, I love when people make get made fun of, including myself. Yeah, well, me that's too. why we roast each other on the show. Yeah, we're always roasting each other, <laughs> which is funny because, uh, like in China, people love love to watch you roasting other, other countries people. people. <laughs> other kind, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you roast Chinese people, oh fuck, you're fucked. Game over. Yeah, <laughs> but in, that's why my my wedding speech went so viral. They see me like on my wedding. They roasting my husband, roasting the the Irish, Irish family, Irish family <laughs> the whole family. Right? So they're and like, they took it well, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Irish people can take a piss. Like huh. you can just yeah, you can take a piss on them. It's fine, and they're they love it. They absolutely love. And even like going to my husband's house, you can see everybody's like roasting each other all the time. That's great. Yeah, it's just the humor there is so different. And here, if you roast someone, people are like, "Oh, you <laughs> can you do that? No, you can't do that." Mm. Yeah. Well, Don, when's uh when's your next show? Uh, I haven't planned recently, but after Chinese New Year, I'm gonna start planning a probably a tour. Yeah, that's my that's my because recently I've been really busy with my uh, directing project. Great. So that was that was hard for me to do the comedy uh, shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also. Yeah. Also, I'm I'm trying to give myself a little bit of break, trying to figure out because I think after I came back from Ireland, I'm just like, what do I want yeah. in comedy? Like, what what exactly do I want? Yeah. I think that's a question a lot of people are asking themselves these days. Yeah. 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 I mean, I would love to w- go watch the next time you go. Yeah. yeah please I'll let, let you guys know. know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to sure. be there. For sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure she's going to pick us out in the crowd and roast <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> roast Howie, please don't roast. <laughs> Um, where where can people find you if they want to connect with you? Uh, they can follow my uh, if you're Chinese, you're on Chinese social media. Follow Xiao Tian Wang. That is my uh, Weibo, Xiao Hong Shu, Douyin. If uh, if you're on Instagram and YouTube, is Donnie the Chinese? Donnie the Chinese. Yeah. <laughs> so or search Don Wang, I probably will pop yeah. out. I love your yeah. name because when I was like Don Wang, I'm like, did she do that on purpose? Like Don Wan, you know, yeah. like, yeah. the, the D- Spanish D- version of Don Wan. Yeah. Wait, D A W N. Yo. D D A W N in a Wang like Wang like it's like she did it on purpose but kind of not because that's her name. No, yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like Don Wang like D O N J U A N. Right, right, right. right. But what's funny is like uh, it should be Don and W A N G. Oh yeah, yeah, right? Wow, yeah. Right, right, right. But then. All the white, you know, wang. all the white like, like wan. I'm like, I don't wang. want to be a wan. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> it sounds terrible. I'm already a don. <laughs> like, I don't want to be a wan. Also, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound good. Interesting. So you're you're kind <laughs> of like that. you're yeah. pushing Dong. them to pronounce your name more correctly, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, Dong wang. 
Yeah. Big, um, big Dom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big Dom. Hey, Don. Um, thanks so much for coming on the show. It Thank was you really so fun much talking for to you. Me. I feel I like there's so much more I want to talk about, right? We need to have you back on. Yeah. Yeah, so much let's fun. do it. Anytime. So much fun. Yeah, yeah. And we're definitely going to go check out your shows. But uh, sure. once again, thank you for coming on the show and spending this time with us. Thanks for having me. Hey, cheers. Great fun. Cheers. Xin Nian Kuai Le. Xin Nian Kuai Le. Are you going anywhere? Uh, I'm going home. Home. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, that was Don. I'm Justin. I'm Howie. I'm Eric. All right. Be good. Be well. Peace. Peace. The last is sad to see.